We could right. call the tri board meeting to order, and I see no one here from the tri board. No, 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 no. I have oh, you are. Oh, you so are. In your name, please. Alexi Levine. Alexi Levine. Alexi Levine. Thank you very much. I didn't know you. Glad to be here. This is our new finance committee. Nice to meet you. Mike Lockingham, John. Thank you for joining us. Are any of your other members joining us? Uh, Valerie couldn't be here. I don't know about the other members. Okay. Amy said she'd be here, but uh, she might be coming straight from work. Yeah. And school committee is not joining us. I wish they would join us all out there at TV land. That would be nice. Uh, since we have a town meeting coming up and we're going to be talking about um, our warrants and everything, I thought it might be a good idea. So I'll kind of call the by board meeting to order. Would <laughs> um, be helpful if I gave like an overview of where we are. We're we on the um, on the warrant. On the warrant. On the war yeah, we might as well get to that. John's ten minutes away. Huh? John's ten minutes away. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, David. All right. So the finance committee has uh, done all of their work except for two articles: the trust for Hadley Kids Incorporated and the sidewalks on that they've given positive recommendations for all the articles, all the money articles. The trust, the Hadley Kids Incorporated said that they're not ready for this special town meeting, so they've asked that we yank Here's Amy. Amy. Yank that article. So that's easy. We met your new board member. <laughs> is not ready for prime time. We're deferring that to the end of the time meeting. So the only issue is left for the finance. You can take all of them if you would like. Oh. Um, uh, I think I have. Got the rest of it? You don't have the big one. We don't have that one on page here, do we? Printed? No, not yet. Okay. Why don't we, since the finance committee is here, why don't we just start from the top and go through, unless there's no change where it was before. Do you want to go through the anything, Amy, besides what he has spoken about or? Um, uh, I, I, no, we can just go down the list. Okay. And there's nothing, no changes. Let's just head from top to toe, toe to top. Okay. Go okay. from there. All right. You want it? Is that okay with you? Sure. How would you like to handle it? Do you want me to just talk? Uh, well, no, we'll just, if, if there's any changes, um, Select board salaries, we'll just say there's a slight increase there, and it's 2%. not on the part of the select board getting any pay because we don't. Um, two, two positions. <laughs> two positions. <laughs> you didn't see that in your last That's slight of hand. <laughs> <laughs> 2% times zero, I know the outcome. Yeah, so it was 2% increase? 2%, no step. Okay. That's the same for the accountant, for the assessors, for the treasurer, for the tax collector, for the clerk. Now, how come the Conservation Commission, their expenses jumped from 3 to 15? So they um, they pay their vendor. Janice Stone is not an employee. She's a vendor. They pay her out of the revolving funds. Those revolving funds have not kept pace with the amount of work, and so we're going to have to reshape those revolving funds during the annual town meeting. But to get her through the year, we need to infuse uh, about $12,000 in there in order for them to continue doing the work that they're doing with all the growth that we're seeing in town. Well, and to be, to be clear, too, a lot of her time was spent on town-related projects. Oh, yeah. So it's not, it's not just that we're not collecting from, you know, business along Route 9. She spent a fair amount of time with So where, where did that extra money come from? Well, this comes from uh, Raise and Appropriate. Raise and Appropriate? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Planning Board of the Salaries 2% Property Insurance. This is a bill that we got after annual town meeting. We budgeted 106500 but the bill came in at 124071 Okay. All right. That's driven a lot by the improvements that we're doing to our property. <clears throat> town Buildings, Senior Center, Town Hall, and um, well, Senior Center in North Hadley Village Hall show a reduction. Uh, it's senior center based upon history and North Hadley Village Hall because we're going to sell the building. Mm -hmm. uh, slight increase for the town hall based upon historical uh, expenses. Police salaries, that's all union contract negotiated. Fire is 2%. Um, communication salaries, that's union contract and nego uh, increase along with the temporary employee that we uh, authorized the <coughs> chief to hire because of an illness. The dispatcher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, building inspector salaries, 2%. Gas plumbing inspector, 2%. School department, they originally had asked for 57000 and change, and they were able to look at their expenses going into the first quarter of the fiscal year and they've modified their request down from 50000 to 25000 That line item went up, did it? So the, the, the amount of their increase. Oh, right. The amount of the ask was reduced. It's right. still an ask. Right. Yeah. Okay. Highway uh, salaries and expenses, that's all union contracts, sewer, water, the same. Building maintenance salaries. Uh, this is a bit of housekeeping. There's no real change in that total amount. It's just that we had put a human body in the expense line, and that's always a problem when you're trying to report deductions and withholdings. So that's a, that's a neutral cost adjustment that will save us uh, later on. Council on aging salaries, two percent plus the increase for the director that we all talked about. Hadley Media salaries 2%, library salaries 2%, park and Russian commission salaries 2%. Uh, long term principal, uh, debt principal, and uh, interest. This is again a neutral adjustment. We're able to spend more money on the principal uh, and less on the interest, and this will save money in the long run. Burgers compensation. Uh, again, this is a bill that came in after annual town meeting, so it's an increase of $1,400. As we get closer, we'll have numbers for the raise and appropriate. Yeah, so those numbers are shown on the big, big sheet that you have in front of you. So I'll, when you post this, I'll just fill those in. I will tell you what those numbers are. And this total, David, is that total budget? Total budget. Not that, but these numbers aren't the total budget, right? That's correct. Yeah, okay. So we did, we did, in the finance committee, go over all these numbers. We felt pretty, you know, comfortable with them. The only one I was very uncomfortable with is at the time was, um, but I'd go along with whatever the select board decides is I didn't have a problem with the council on aging. I felt that it was uh, not a time to just pick out one person. I, I thought that we needed to um, look across the board to help and, and look at the people's spots. I thought that, you know, the 2% two, two for each person makes sense, but just to pick out one department and to match it with one other person I didn't think sounded like something that we want to pick out. We, we talked about, I remember being at your finance committee meeting back in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, this was actually raised going into the annual town meeting. Yes. And I think it I came that. about because of the grade levels. Remember we were looking at mm -hmm. the, is it 22, is that the right one, Linda? It, it came about with the park and rec director. Yeah. Um, and then recognizing that the council on aging director, there was, you know, she was a grade lower than. I thought it was the um, library. She was comparing it to the library. Right, right. Yeah. That she, you know, so I, yeah. I think that was why we were willing to look at it as somewhat of a one off because it stood out relative. I agree with you that we still need to move forward with the um, comprehensive study, but I, I think that was that was part of the conversation that we were willing to do that for that reason. That mm -hmm. it just seemed a little bit glaring. 
not to skip around, but is that the, what we were thinking about in capital? Yes. Um, that mm -hmm. plan? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. So I thought the capital plan should be do, done before, you know, especially. I mean, we're especially since the last me, uh, the last email I got mentioned that we were going to be putting money towards that, mm -hmm. and we had some extra maybe putting money towards that and looking at it. I thought it was like probably a little bit too early to maybe do that, you know. So because you can't take money back if you find out that you're overpaying someone. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just the felt select, like the select board are going to have to approve all these. They have to approve um, them All so. these uh, these uh, salary adjustments. So yeah. raise the money, and then we can fine tune it as we go along. So one question I have is um, sewer reserve fund. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thirty-five thousand that's coming out of there—is that what I'm seeing? Where, where is that for the capital plan? Mm -hmm. If I'm reading that right. Thirty-five thousand—that's for the capital. For mm -hmm. uh, trying to think what it is. Let me, let me pull that up. Hold on a second. The only reason I'm a little leery about that is because that fund is almost depleted. Yeah. And uh, so I just want to make sure that it's actually being used for a it's the sewer line assessment is what that's mainly for, thirty thousand yeah. dollars. And that was part of our plan that we wanted to do. Yeah, absolutely. Because it kind of saves money over the long term. Yeah. I just want to make sure it wasn't going toward something else that wasn't sewer related. Yeah. I don't know what the other it says thirty thousand dollars for that. Yeah, there's five thousand dollars for um, uh, their contribution to uh, building improvements down there. Okay. So I split. Oh, yeah. There's a fifteen thousand dollar project. I split it into three: five, five for five, water, five. five for sewer, and five for general. That's the okay. gable end. Gable end. Yeah. Okay. That's on the highway garage, not on the sewer. Yep. To David's question. So. so um, yeah, so the sewer reserves were uh, certified by Department of Revenue at uh, $313,000. We're transferring in uh, 80000 from sewer impact mm -hmm. and transferring in an additional uh, amount from the, uh, the, the general transfer article. So something on the order of, um, let me see if I'm in the right place. At the end of the day, before you start spending from sewer reserves, you're going to have um, sewer reserves up to three nine seven thousand. Yeah, I, I just thought I, I saw something around ninety six thousand when it's all said and done, and that seemed like a very low number. But that, I mean, it sounds like what we're spending it on is legitimate sewer related stuff, so that's, yeah. that's okay. I just want to make sure it wasn't going for something else. So. Right, sewer reserves are are so critical area that we need to focus in on for FY 2020. Well, yeah, I was just going to say, to, so to that end, I was wondering if maybe we could, um, after town meeting, maybe at a subsequent tri-board meeting, um, start a conversation with the finance committee. I think we need to come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's getting dangerously low. Yeah. You know? And again, we'll be collecting more revenue from the sewer um, quarterly. There, that's being collected now quarterly also. Right. So we should run that. Analysis. So that will be like a revolving type of thing. We're not going to always get low on it. You'll always have money coming in, right, Linda? Is that how it works? Mm -hmm. The sewer. On the sewer impact. Yes. Yes. And sure. we have money that is still out there that needs to be paid in for the sewer impact also. We yeah. have, um, um, since in this fiscal year, we've collected over 100,000 additional on sewer impact mm -hmm. already. Okay. Yeah. So what so do we, we do with that? Look out ahead. Yeah. So what do we do with the fifteen percent that you guys went up on water and sewer? Did you just tack it into administration costs and you're spending on a general budget, or what are you doing? Who, with who's it? you guys, John? <laughs> you and David. Oh, me, me and sure. David. Sure, sure. I'll point the finger right <laughs> off the bat. No, I, would, I was legitimately asking. I weren't sure if you were. Oh, good for you're you talking about the select <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Go get them. <laughs> Do you have a breakdown on a 450 and a 440 for the administration costs? Because we got caught by DOR once or with that. You're yeah, talking about the admin charges? 
It, is it in here? Uh, it's in your budget book that we headed out back in. Okay, I got that at home. I haven't got that for you. All right, so we don't. Look. I just started going through what you gave me. All right, so. so we can look. You can look into that at home, John. Right. Well, if we in, we did talk about having a concentrated discussion on the administrative charges at some point. So yeah. maybe we could put that on the list as well. Yeah. Okay. On your list. <laughs> so the finance committee has recommended this budget. Select board is still. What do we need a vote on it? Is yeah, this what sure. you're saying? So yeah. does anybody want to? I'll make a motion to accept the uh, <coughs> the changes. Okay. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. All right. Article two. Everybody's agreed to on the revolving fund for the sewer on uh, the park and rec department. Uh, for the trust, it's out. For the transfer of eighty thousand sewer reserve impact to the sewer reserves, the finance committee has agreed to that, but the select board has not made the recommendation yet. On the revolving fund for park and rec, are you on two or are you on three now? We're on four now. We're on four, <laughs> boy. Why so behind? The revolving fund is being pulled or passed over, David. Not the revolving fund. You guys yeah. have already approved that. I'm sorry, the park no, and rec, just the, the trust. The, the, the trust. The trust. The, 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 the trust. trust is being. They're not ready. Okay, okay. so that's coming out. So that's yeah. coming out. Sorry, I'm not talking that's where I was. If I'm going too fast, then <laughs> I was too. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know we we're on four, and I thought, boy, I'm behind the eight ball right. here. Sorry, tonight. sorry, I'll slow down. Okay. That's no. okay. Now, Article Four. Article Four. Okay, this is the uh, fund balance transfer. This is. We normally put this on a consent agenda, but there's only one consent article in this uh, warrant, so just handle it regularly. Uh, we're transferring a bunch of money into capital stabilization, water reserves, sewer reserves, sewer impact fees, and the CPA. We're also reducing the amount of debt that we authorized for the fire pumper truck so that we don't have that thing cluttering up our chart of accounts. So this is housekeeping. Mm -hmm. Motion. So we are going to have that library electrical. We're going to do that transfer. Yep. Getting it back, right? Giving it back, going back to the original pot of money. So if we want to do that in the future, we're going to have to reapply for that. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Okay. And could I just ask the library trustees take a position on that? Yes, they did. And they're okay with that. Yes. Okay. And municipal building was good with it too. Uh, I didn't ask them. The library trustees submitted the letter to the CPA. That's why they did it. They started it. Well, that's right. It's not as much for that letter. <laughs> okay. Make a motion to approve. Okay. I'll second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, could I Zero. ask that the municipal building committee at least be made? Well, we've already voted, but at least be made aware of the sure. contents of Article Four, <coughs> yeah. just in case they're not. Okay, number five, everybody's agreed to. Sewer impact fee going to the sewer reserves, mm -hmm. 80,000. Mm -hmm. We already voted on that. Yep. yep. All right, number six, the capital stabilization. In the original uh, plan, we were going to uh, transfer $7,003. And as I said, we have an uh, unexpected windfall because of the restatement of the prior year's new growth. So that uh, that was almost $23,000. So I'm proposing and recommending that we transfer that also into capital stabilization and fund more of the capital plan than we had originally planned. David, were you able to, to confirm? Yes. That? Okay, good. Yeah, what happened is uh, we, we had um, last year, we had uh, new growth at 142,000 and change. After the town meeting was uh, concluded, the Department of Revenue, because it's a revaluation year, certified it at a higher amount of about $22,000 higher. That becomes part of the formula, and so there's a compounding uh, effect that should bump it up another thousand mm dollars. -hmm. So. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Oh, wait, it's already there. <laughs> 
It's just the uh, number changed. No, that was the finance committee. Article that, 6. <laughs> Article 6 was uh, yeah, only okay. voted on by the finance. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 John, seven that No. No, right now. No? No. Four to one? Do you want to say bye or no? Yeah, I, I think we ought to take a break from the capital here <coughs> and, and move along with this budget. In the last three years, we went from 15 million to 18 million. You know, we're, we're spending out of control here. And I know some of it was for good purposes. But well, I, you know, it, the fire department. All I can say is, John, is damned if you do and damned if you don't. I know. So if if people will pay for it in the end, I'm we'll sure. Pay for it in the end, but <clears> people are always saying, "Well, you, you let things go, you didn't do things, and." Somewhere you got to try to conserve a little bit. But now we're trying to play catch up and replace some of these things that are so outdated. I mean, it's not like we're doing things frivolously either. So, but that's okay. You can have your opinion. No, no problem. Uh, move on to capital Article Seven. Article Seven. So there's a change in, because of the windfall of additional money. There's been a small change, and we were able to accomplish more in the capital plan than uh, we had originally settled on and sites on. So just to walk through here, here's appraisal software for the assessors for $8,000. That's going to be matched by another $8,200 that we have set aside in the prior article for IT. This is a mission critical uh, project. We're going to have difficulties printing bills in a year if we don't uh, take care of the software issues. Evidence Locker Police Department, this is something that is high priority for the police and this is something, Amy, by the way, which is new on the capital plan because we had originally said that we would pay for this out of an old building article, but to take some pressure off of that, $9,000. This is new classification compensation plan review, we just talked about that $14,000, which is in line with the estimates that I have gotten. David, can I ask where you received the estimate? Got the estimate by going out on the small town administrator's uh, uh, manager's uh, network and said for towns of such and such a population that have gone through this process, what is the price range that okay. we've gotten? 14000 seems to be the consensus. Okay, good. Maybe a little bit less. Mm -hmm. Um, map catch basins and, and manholes, 20,000 out of water reserves. Highway garage uh, repair, that's 10,000 out of sewer reserves, sorry, 5,000 out of sewer reserves, 5,000 out of water reserves. Sewer line assessment, this is, this is something that Marla put in place, $30,000, and that'll be a recurring cost. Mm -hmm. Water tank access and cleaning, 25,000 from water reserves. Callahan well number one reconditioning, a must do for 25,000 water reserves. Uh, Hadley Media has got to be relocated if we're going to demolish the Hooker School, so 15,000 out of their reserves. HVAC uh, attic venting and dampers, this is something that's important for the upstairs of the public safety complex. $27,000, it's really a $30,000, $35,000 project. We'll use other articles, money and other articles to make up the difference. Uh, Town Hall staff vehicle, uh, it's in bad condition, 10000 to borrow. A cruiser, annual replacement. We've just, just gotten to the place where we have to replace a cruiser every year. Formerly it was a, a scramble to catch up, so. This is a this is an important milestone. Forty-seven thousand to borrow. Skid unit for the fire department. Thirty-one thousand to borrow. What is that? That's a piece of equipment that goes into the back of one of the trucks so that they can bring it out to the uh, to the fire site or the. It's a brush truck. Goes on the back truck. of the brush truck, I guess. And this is he's going to he's trying to do it as economically as possible because I guess these are very expensive, so he's got a plan. I'm kind of jumping out here, but he's mm -hmm. got a plan to put it together on, on a relatively low cost, I okay. guess, for what these things are. Gotcha. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. That's quite all right. Oh, thank you for helping me with that one. Uh, 
planned replacement of the Ford 550 dump truck, 85,000 borrowed. Had um, Hopkins Academy cafeteria replacement for 55,400 uh, to borrow that. Then we have a number of uh, school-related security upgrades and health upgrades uh, for 98000 We're going to borrow that. And then the Council on Aging Van needs to be replaced. This is a scheduled replacement for $80,000, and we'll be borrowing that as well. So those are all going to ballot? No. No. There are only two that are going to ballot. The Hopkins Academy cafeteria equipment and replacement is going to ballot and the dump truck is going to ballot. Everything else is going to be borrowed within the levy. And the dump truck? Uh, can I just ask on the capital plan, or Christian, well, Christian or David, um, are any of, were these items in the existing capital plan, or were they newly added this year? Or? The only new, the only new thing that I can think of is the compensation classification plan. We had added that at the beginning of the budget process and made it to the cutting room floor, right. and then we were able to put it back in, subject here. But the dump truck is known and the cafeteria yeah. equipment. One thing on here that did come up that we kind of didn't want to go to ballot, I guess, just to be honest, is the um, security upgrades at the school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was something that came up um, due to some circumstances I believe in the spring yep. mm -hmm. and we didn't want that to be we'd like that to go through but because of the nature right. of those upgrades sure. um, not have a lot of discussion about them yep. um, because we want to keep them secure so it's basically security and not health or is there something in there about health that needed to it's be upgraded security. also I think security. it's health and safety but yeah, security yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're gonna replace really. the water bubblers so that oh. Okay, so yeah. that goes into it. That's water bubblers. Yeah. yeah. No more okay. lead flavored water? Yeah. No more lead flavored water. Come on. <laughs> Where's everybody's sense of it? I know. Daring. Short, <laughs> short <laughs> money. Yeah, so the, 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 the 20000 on the catch basin and manholes. Yep. Now that's for highway. Yep. Why are we taking it out of water? Manholes that go to water, water basins, catch no. basins. No. No. This is why you just went up 15% and you're taking money out of water reserves for other items. I think this is a requirement of MS4. That it should come out of that 400 and something thousand that we've already approved for. We could do that. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I mean, I think if we can do that and save the water reserve money. So how much, how much is in the... Uh, this MS4. is what I'm saying. But what's in the MS4? I'm looking at that 15% that we went up on the water and sewer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And people are just realizing what it's costing them right now, even though we're quarterly. Mm -hmm. We practically doubled some of their bills. Mm -hmm. And we need to conserve here somehow. We can't just keep robbing the sewer and the water to offset the oh, budget. But that's a good point for you to bring up, then, mm -hmm. to take it out of, out of what it's, it's, it's used for. That, that's that's, that's that, not a problem. That's not what it pertains That's to. That's why you're here, to tell us. So what's the pleasure of the board? Uh, we, we do have money for MS4. We could take it out of that. I, was, I MS4, sense, was, that was MS4 earmarked for anything else? Right. I, I 400 is earmarked for something. So was, the, was that marked for, earmarked for anything else? And that's for the five-year permit for compliance. Five-year permit. Yeah, so we don't know what the balance is, huh? do you know? We, arranged, we originally raised three hundred and ninety thousand dollars for that project. I think we have a balance of at least three fifty. Do you have the uh, mm -hmm. water reserves? Not yeah, water reserves. Oh, oh, yeah, about yeah right. water, water reserves are over yeah, yeah, a million no, at this point. Yeah. So about three ninety. Yeah. So I would say take it out of there. Yeah. Since we seem to be in pretty good shape with MS4 yeah. right now, at least. Yeah. So, okay. That would be fine. Do we need to formally amend the vote for that? Can we just take it off of yeah. that article? Yeah, let me just take it off and we'll fund okay. it through that article. Right. Thank I'll, you, John. We'll make any adjustment. Does the finance committee have any? No, no, that's a good point. We didn't understand. Yeah. I mean, we didn't, we think we, we uh, yeah, didn't was, map it to the, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, 20,000 here and 20,000 there, there, it's going to add up in the long run. Mm -hmm. That's okay. 
can, can I ask? You know, if, if it's specifically, when you created the DBW, and everybody knows that they went one third, one third, one third on everything. Well, I mean, the highway garage is highway. It's really not one third water, and it's really not one third sewer. The highway garage is the highway garage, and, and you're, you're taking money out of both of those as a DPW to maintain that building, you know? Uh, we but it maintains it. the buildings, it also maintains the DP the <coughs> sewer and the water vehicles. Um, so yeah. I mean there's a little to, bit to of a, a cross point, to a, a point, yeah. little bit of a crossover there too. So I mean these are expenses that, that yeah. weren't added in when you created the DPW. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it overlaps and we're the water and the sewer are paying for it now. And as a sewer and water user I'm paying my fair share, and it really bothers me the way we're spending the money out of those two accounts. Mm -hmm. That's good to look at them, for sure. Okay, let's go to the next one. So, so um, what's the select board recommendation? Oh, so want to take a vote on it? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve this with uh, the exception of the mapping the catch basins and manholes. Okay, second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nothing. Okay. So we're going to spend a bit of time on town meeting four on, on Article Seven because we have a bunch of motions. There are eight motions total for this, so we'll just go through it and get. get I think the job. we already did. You just said yeah. the dump truck, the school equipment, yeah. security. So we don't really need to go over them. No, we don't. Do we have the money for? Um, we're going to have to have a ballot. Do we budget for a ballot? Yeah. I think we have to with the marijuana stuff anyway. Yeah. So. Okay. yeah. All right, so Article 8. Article 8, everybody's on board with this. This is the first cemetery one. Yeah. Article 9, that's the, everybody's on board with this. The second cemetery mm -hmm. one. And it's CPA money. It's CPA money. Mm -hmm. So you need to say that. Article 10, everybody's on board. There's a little bit of dissent with the CPA committee for the money for the church. Well, that will go to town meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Article 11, Cemetery Commission powers and duties. Everybody's on board with that. Mm -hmm. Sidewalk, snow and ice, general bylaws. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so we have had discussion. Did you take out Middle Street and West Street? Yeah, so if you look at A, Section A. This was tough to do because zoning doesn't uh, provide a good uh, um, template for making this happen. You got a mosaic of residential and commercial properties along a lot of road lines, so I had to segregate this bylaw and to some home businesses too, and some home businesses as well from the Amherst Town Line to uh, South Maple Street. So this bylaw applies only in that part of town. Okay. okay. So that's that that for, for now. Oh. And and you can expand on it in agriculture. Yeah. What do you mean? There are there's some agricultural properties on Route Nine or no actually. What does that have to sold. do with it? There's no there's no there's sidewalks in front of them. Oh, I was actually just thinking about the stand the vegetable man parcel that's been farmed, but that's not a Commercial. There's no that's sidewalk there. But that's South Maple. Yeah, there's a yeah. sidewalk. There's sidewalk. Sidewalk, there. yeah. sidewalk goes all the way up to this the bylaw would, This bylaw would not goes apply. Up to Spruce Hill. This is only goes affects the new sidewalks that have just been installed. From the mall. Basically. Oh, from the mall yeah. to the town of Amherst. Yeah. 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 First sentence, too. <laughs> <laughs> Zipping right through that. There, yeah. Okay. Nice. But with that, so are there going to be sidewalks in front of Whole Foods and that whole plaza there? Eventually, the, eventually we're going to have sidewalks all along Route yeah. Nine, where and the bike lanes all the way along yeah. when they do the when they do the Route so Nine rehab. So will we have to redo this if they put sidewalks? In yeah. And so what what we don't have time to, and the way that we should approach this is that uh, we should do an overlay district. Work with the planning board to come up with an overlay district that would be a much more effective way of uh, keeping those sidewalks clear. Has so the nice. planning board seen this? Up? Uh, yes. Did they have any comments? No. 
The only thing I would say is that uh, Sharon or Bill should probably speak to this at town meeting as far as how much it'll save in manpower or mm -hmm. in hours and money uh, you know, if we go forward with it because I know there'll be some pushback. Mm -hmm. But I think at least we took the residential aspect out of it. Yep. Yep. Can we get any input from whoever's involved with the Amherst Chamber of Commerce maybe? Why would they need to get involved? The, Why do we well want the Amherst involved well in Well, the this? malls are involved with the Amherst Chamber of Commerce. Listen, they get cheap enough taxes from are. us. They can shovel their sidewalks. Well, maybe they have another idea that we could look at. I don't know. Well, let's just go forward with this. They need to take care of them before this winter. They got people that like to walk down from green leaves and from that area. And I think that, you know, they need to take care of the sidewalks. That's why they were put in originally because the state was petitioned by these residents to have access to walk down to Route 9 to go to the malls without walking in the road. So, what? you know, the businesses profit from people. But we do need to provide them with adequate notice. Yeah. Well, yes, I think so if this passes, then we will the send out notices. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Oops, you. Okay. Four, zero, one. Oh, did the Finance Committee? Uh, the no. Finance Committee doesn't have a recommendation. We don't have a quorum with them yet. Okay. Oh. So you can make a recommendation from the floor. All right, everything else is uh, planning board. Okay, perfect. They met last night on the marijuana. Yep. Today. What did they do with that? They, they made a they number of changes. Some of them were editorial, but the, the big changes that they made were, um, let's see if I can remember them all. First of all, no open grow. So any- At all? At all. So, so it has to be cultivated inside any, the yeah, house building. Which in hotel. And the setback for the, right. those buildings would be 300 feet from any property line. What about the issues that Dave raised? 300 feet from any property line, all yeah. four sides? Yep. Yeah. In case it spreads. Okay, <laughs> 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 nothing about this. Uh, the, the, the so it's a weed? <laughs> the main thing is a big enough piece of property to put a greenhouse on and grow any of it now? <laughs> So the, weed, the, main, the main concern, <laughs> the reason why they had originally proposed much smaller setback, but the, original, but the people in the audience were very concerned about odor, and so they wanted the odor and noise. And so there's, no, there's no odor from the plant itself, it's if you smoke it, that's yeah. where you get the odor. No, it oh, does geez. have a smell to it. Does it? it I wouldn't know. I wouldn't either. <laughs> And they were in smoke joint. I'm really a virgin in that what area. What about the issue that David Phil raised about? Um, well, actually, we all agreed to limit it to the two licenses. Two licenses. Was that? Not That's what this started? board has has because of the stipulations of how many right. alcohol licenses we have. We can only issue two. Well, we were talking about them. Yeah, but it in my here. understanding is that our our um, vote doesn't mean anything unless the planning board uh, has the bylaws does, does, does their thing approved. as well as the right. town meeting vote and ballot vote. Mm -hmm. So that's that was the concern. Right. So yeah. That, so yeah. so yes. the planning board did put together an article to um, cap the number of marijuana licenses to no more than 20 percent of our off-premise liquor licenses we have seven of those so 20 percent of seven is 1.4 rounding up is two because the law talks about percentages rather than absolute numbers yeah but we have we have the right to change the number you have the right to decide liquor licenses, right? yeah you so yeah. if we suddenly changed it to 12 that would automatically bring in. And I thought the reason that you brought it up was you wanted to, until we had our heads wrapped around this. My thing was instead of tying our hands for issuing liquor licenses, which I would think most people support the revenue and the, the issuance of, uh, you know, within reason, as the, you know, we're kind of tying our hands to issuing more marijuana licenses as well at the same time. Well, let's, let's think about it. How many really do we need to saturate the area here between Amherst and 
Northampton. The liquor licenses? Or the no, I'm talking about the marijuana yeah. licenses. I mean, how many do you actually really need to have in Hadley? Plant? But that's, a, that's what I, I thought the point was that we were trying to. But we can still limit, limit it to it. whatever we want to. Not unless it's in the bylaw. Yeah, so yeah. the bylaw right now, by having the 20%, is in conflict with the idea of a hard number because it's 20% of a number that is kind of variable. Let me explore this with Joel and see if we can do introduce a floor motion uh, that will get us to the two rather mm -hmm. than 20%. Right? Um, no more than two. Right. No more than two. As a practical matter, you can decide not to issue permits if you if you. Uh, felt that you had an over an abundance of adult use marijuana retail uh, establishments. But my understanding is that we can't though if it's less than twenty percent because that's considered us imposing more twenty. Exactly. Right. But if we're at twenty percent, so that doesn't that rule doesn't apply. But if we change the number of right, it's twenty percent of the number of licenses issued within Package the town stores. for retail sale of alcohol so you're you're tying it to alcohol so Basically, you're the idea was alcohol. to figure out a way to decouple it by fixing it at two right. so that that way down the road if we decided to change the number of alcohol licenses to 20. Yeah. 20 percent of 20 is a much bigger number than two Please understand that the people who backed this law made it intentionally hard for us to do exactly what common sense stuff that we're trying to do. So I'll try to find a path so that we can get to the two. But did they even talk about it? The planning board? Yeah. Uh, yes, I talked to Jim Maximowski about it. But not at the meeting last night? Not at the meeting last night. I, like you said, I think we just need to give ourselves as much flexibility to issue liquor licenses as we see fit without forcing ourselves to issue mm -hmm. marijuana licenses if we don't see fit. I mean, we can mm -hmm. always bump the number down the line, but, um, you know, the two are tied together, unfortunately, at this point. Yeah. So. You, I think, again, this is new territory for all of us, so I'm not entirely sure I have the proper interpretation, but if this were, if this were, liquor licenses. I'm thinking back to my days when I was the town administrator for Deerfield. In South Deerfield you can walk one block and you can have, buy a six pack of beer, you can have a Mai Tai, you can have a fine bottle of champagne. The only reason why you can't get alcohol there is because no one will serve you because you're you're drunk, you know. You, you. So Deerfield was able to restrict the amount of liquor licenses that they issued because they were already saturated in that part of town. So you have a lot of control here. Okay. I think I'm just more concerned about the kind of the process because we talked about it a couple of times here and then there's even an email that was sent out I right. think before the planning board board meeting. And I don't know, I thought I thought it was gonna come mm -hmm. Well, we'll have further discussion before the actual town meeting. Did, did they talk at all about what I had brought up to about yes, the 30.5? Yeah, so they um, they uh, read your email uh, aloud. They did, okay. They addressed both of them. Okay. Um, the first one was that the appeal is to the courts. Okay. All right, that's the only way to go in a special permit. The second one had to do with the discussion of security devices in an executive session and they said that they were not able to do that. Okay. I disagree with them. I think that they can. In fact, I know that you can. What was the concern? My, I had two concerns. One was that in the bylaw right now, it's that if you look under section 30.5, it basically says um, the planning board is not obligated to approve an application for a marijuana establishment that it doesn't find is in the best interest of the town city and complies with the standards and intent of this bylaw ordinance. So what I got from that is they could reject an application for whatever reason they want. It could meet every bylaw and they can reject it. So I just thought that was a little unfair without being able to appeal that to say the select board and then have that overwritten. But it sounds like that appeal would have to go to court instead of the select board. Um, and the other one was that there's a part of the bylaw about having to review the security. Um, I don't know where it is. 
off the top of my head here, but it was about reviewing the security of the establishment. Mm -hmm. And I was just worried that if it becomes, you can do that in open meeting, review all their security plans, then that's putting it out there to anybody. Yeah. This is what they have for security. Right. This is how you get around it, basically. Right. So why not have that review, but in executive session? So right. it's not part of the public record. 35.8, okay, well, that's where it is. So, so those the, are my two comments for that. Their answer to that was that they can't invoke the executive session. I disagree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that you can. Uh, and they said that they don't want to know about the security, that this is something that is between the contractor and the, uh, and the uh, vendor and the state. And the state is ultimately going to be the enforcer of the security provisions. So they just wanted general knowledge of that there is security, but they didn't want to have uh, detailed knowledge of how that security is deployed. What it consists of. Okay. All right. So next week we have a on the eleventh we have a uh, public forum. Public uh, forum. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So we're preparing the slides for that. We're about halfway done. Uh, we typically uh, sign responsibilities for the motions. Joyce wants all the marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you would want me to have that. <laughs> you, you, you normally do the budget one, David, right? I'd be happy to do that for you. You want me to do that one too? Yeah, I think you, you should do the monetary ones, right? Mm -hmm. Park so. and rec is off the table. <laughs> Park and Rec is off the table. Fund balances. Wait, the Article 2, are you doing that one? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry. So we're on Article 4 now. Article 4. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Capital stabilization. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, sewer yeah. transfer. I'll talk about that. That's the, yeah, that's replacing the money that from the uh, emergency yep. actions, right? Yeah. Yep. Capital stabilization transfer. Transfer that's, that's a simple money one. Sir, you can do it. I can do capital so too. Say, yeah. Christian, that All right, so that's a motion, sir, to Chris. I know, yeah, that's going to be a fun one to go through. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cemetery committee for the two cemetery CPA articles. Are you going to you speak, you speak to that? Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'd also be willing. I thought it's the forum or the meeting. Both. Both. Now, when's the forum? Next Thursday. Okay. So we're doing the forum next Thursday, and then the actual on the 18th. No. And I'll, if I need to talk about it, I'd be happy to since so it's bringing it under uh, DPW. Mm -hmm. We have a church to talk about. Is that the CPX to talk about, or do you want us to chime in? <coughs> Who wants to talk about? Steeple. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the steeple, here's the people. Snow and ice on <laughs> sidewalks. I'll do that one. Everything else is um, plenty good. Okay. You want the deep the cemetery you, one? So you want to do the you want to do the sidewalks or the cemetery? No. Mm -hmm. Fine. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take a vote to? Uh, We're doing a good board. job. With all the changes Can we take there. a motion to sign the warrant for the changes? Can make a motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, unanimous. All signed. Con congratulations, we have a warrant. Yay. All right. Uh, any questions from anybody for the tribe board? No. We good? All right, we can move into our regular.
schedule meeting then. Well, thank you, Alexi. I hope you come back. Thank you. I'll try. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining the finance committee. We appreciate it. Okay. So we'll go into the consent agenda. We have warrants, PR-1913, PR-1912, AP-1913, AP-1925, AP-1912. One day liquor licenses for the top of the campus, Women's Basketball Mullen Center Concourse Concessions, 1031, 1116, 1120, 1128, 1212, 1212, and 1221, 2018. One day liquor licenses for top of the campus for men's basketball, Mullen Center Concourse Concessions, 1013, 11 11-9, 1113, 1116, 1119, 1128, 124, and 1221, 2018. Top of the campus men's basketball mullen center court, side floor, courthouse club, 1030, 11-6, 11-9, 11-13, 11-16, 11-19, 11-28, 12-4, 12-21, 2018. We have a request for special town employee status from Mark Sullivan from the DA Sullivan asks that the town review his special town employee status. And we also have uh, signed the election warrant. And we also have uh, Council on Aging Outreach Coordinator appointment of Lauren Hannigan. I am expecting her. She knows it's at seven. Okay. Well, then we we'll, we can revisit that again okay. to have introductions. Thank you. Thank you. And that is our consent agenda. Does anybody have any questions or six twenty or eighteen? Six twenty. Six twenty or eighteen. We never approved that one. It's on mine. It's not on yours. What the minutes? Yeah. 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 We're a little bit yes. behind. Yes, 620. Mm -hmm. um, my only question is the special town employee. What's, uh, yeah, so uh, DA Sullivan is a uh, contractor as well as an, uh, uh, serves as an OPM. So Mr. Mark Sullivan is asking if it's okay for him to bid on the senior center construction project. Right now he would be in conflict. Uh, he would obviously recuse himself from further OPM work with the, uh, the library if, if the contract was awarded to DA Sullivan, but it's just asking that they have an opportunity to, um, it, to bid on the project. Did they meet the criteria, uh, the, the pre-bid? The pre-qual, pre yes. Pre-qual, yeah, they yes, did. They did. Okay. Okay. I don't yeah. have a problem with that. No, yeah. no, no, no. He's, he's going to have to do the paperwork mm -hmm. through, yeah. through Jess. So. Yeah. As long as he gets that done, I don't see a problem in it. Yeah. So, any motion for the consent agenda? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve, um, stripping out that one. Yeah. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, we can have public comments. Can we do that now? Sure. Uh, anybody here for a public comment tonight? No? Okay. Um, yes. Yes? Several seniors have requested that there be a sign on the corner of East Street that would indicate that the police station is way down there because they had somebody driving them and they didn't believe that that's where they were taking them. So some kind of identification for people going through town to say, yeah, it's down there. I thought there was a sign that said public safety, public safety complex or something like that. I think you is might want to be more specific. Yeah. Public, public safety is fire and police. But I mean, you can't get more specific than that. I think that there's some people who would like to see this bill. It's been a fire station, a fire station and that is police station. It's been a few years, and I've had a lot of questions about that. Why we can we have never, the DPW look at that. Why we never put up a nice sign like on the corner of the sidewalk by the post office or something? Mm -hmm. but, like a hospital sign direction right. sign, something like that. Yeah. It says police fire this way. Mm -hmm. So I think that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
you're, you're talking at the corner of East Street and Route 9, right? Yeah. You want to dig into your administrative report this well, week? Well, there's not a lot to say. It's all town meeting all the time at this point. Okay. Um, but uh, <laughs> just touching on the updates. Um, Zaturka Park, Phase 3 Reconstruction. Um, we had a big meeting uh, over at the job site on Monday morning to come up with a change of uh, scope of work to include better drainage of the retention pond, regrading of the slope of the northeastern corner, removal of the playground areas, and removal of stumps and fill for the site. Um, the idea is that we're trying to change the design of the uh, project so that we can button it up by the end of October. Uh, Park and Rec is meeting tonight in order to review the change order that would uh, reduce the cost of the project so that they can get the project completed on time. I will be ta asking you a little bit later on to uh, uh, fund part of their change order through the Woodchuck Nominee Trust tonight. A change of about 3000 a little bit more than that, $3,000 for that project. And I'll continue working with the Park and Rec Commission to bring this project in for a landing. North Hadley Village Hall, we'll be talking about that tonight. We received one proposal for a commercial real estate broker. Special town meeting update, we just did that. OSHA update, we met with Maya. With the help of Maya, we are undertaking a self-assessment to prepare for the new OSHA requirements, which go into effect on February 1st. Adult use marijuana, we just covered that uh, issue. Um, DPW search. Update for the DPW search. Do you have a report of any kind? Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, tonight we met and uh, established the committee. And um, I'm the chair. Molly's the uh, sector. And um, we do have several applicants. And I think we're starting interviews on the 15th. So we should be moving Excellent. forward with that. Okay. If you need any posting help, now, let me know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Safety Committee, we met with our representative from Maya. The Maya stands for Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Agency. They're our insurer for most of our liability and, uh, and, and uh, property coverage. Uh, we reviewed the loss runs for FY 2018. There were no areas of concerns. There was nothing that stood out as a recurring hazard to uh, the public or the workplace. We reviewed the FY 2019 Maya Rewards Program. There's some room for improvement there. Started preparing for the FY 2019 grant application for safety upgrades and started preparing to comply with the new OSHA requirements. The FY18 audit, the auditing firm Melanson and Heath has finished their preliminary audit work. They budgeted five days to do that. We were able to wrap it up in two days. They have a follow-up field visit for December 17th. And they have a whole host of community events coming up. Public forum for the special town meeting warrant on October 11th. Arts and Crafts on the Common on the October 13th. Young Men's Club Oktoberfest also the 13th. UMass Regatta on the 13th. Fragile X Wine Tasting on the 14th. Special Town Meeting on the 18th. UMass Parents Weekend on the 20th. Kestro 5K for Farmland Race 21st. And don't forget to vote at state and federal elections on November 6th. And just throw in there that the Sugar Shack is not having their tractor parade this year. Mm. Last year was the last year, so they won't be having any this year. Um, but stay tuned for other events that they will be having. And please join them in their upcoming events that they will have. Um, I guess I can do this now while we have a little bit of time. We have. Uh, Three services in one day deal, and this is for the Senior Center. It's going to be Wednesday, October 17th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And it's going to be in the Senior Center downstairs. They're going to have a fluke clinic by Walgreens, including 
Prevarnar, 13, Pneumovax, 23, and Tdap, and that's your tetanus, diphtheria, uh, pertussis. Uh, please bring a current copy of your insurance card and wear loose fitting sleeves. Hearing screenings, ear w exams for wax, hearing aid cleanings. And that will be by Deborah Reed, she's a doctor of audiology. And then eyeglass repair clinic by Visions Works, and including changing nose pads. So all that will take place on October 17th. So please join them and enjoy what they offer you. Do you have to be a senior to get a flu shot? Anything over 18 and over. So good to know for you. Walk in, no. Please get your flu shots. We don't know what the winter is going to be this year. So yep. um, it's a benefit to everybody. And if you live with seniors or you have kids, then, you know, I'm a, I'm a strong advocate since I'm a nurse, and uh, uh, that's where I come from. Everybody in my office is kind of mandated by Cooley to um, get flu shots. Uh, if you don't, you end up wearing a mask until the flu season is over, so, especially when you're around people, so, uh, big advocate. Your, I think your primary care offices, and there's no charge actually even in the primary care offices, so please take preventive measures this year. Uh, do we have? Oh, good. Okay. So we have on our consent agenda, we have, I'm just going to backtrack for a second. We have a COA outreach coordinator appointment, and we have Lauren Hannigan here. Yes. Hi. Yes. So Lauren um, is coming back from New Jersey. She did live here previously. Um, she um, just moved back this summer. She has a master's in public health. Um, prior to moving back here, she um, was a care management coordinator, specifically following up on people with Medicaid. Um, but she also did home visits um, with people. She's experienced, and this was all elder care. Um, she's experienced in home care referrals. She does intake and coordination of services such as fuel assistance, SNAP assistance. Um, she's done protective services um, and she creates educational materials and with fuel assistance now being um, recertification season and all the other things that are coming up with um, trying to stay in your home, stay safe and stay healthy. Um, we're Hoping that um, we can respectfully request that she be appointed to the position of outreach coordinator for us. Thank you for joining us. Do you have anything to say? No, I'm really excited to move back and be a part of the community. Did you, did you go to school here? I did. I went to the University of Massachusetts. Okay, great. And I met my husband, who's from Amherst. <laughs> Welcome back, and uh, thank you for joining us. Do we need to have an appointment or do you? Yes, please. Yeah, I think we did that already, but do you want to do it again? Um, no, we actually stripped that one out. So I have a motion to uh, accept uh, the appointment of Lauren. Second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations yeah. and <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you all too. Enjoy okay. your time. Thank you. All right. So we've got a little time because we have our public hearing at 7.30. Sorry to make everybody wait, but we're going to move along here with uh, North Hadley Hall uh, real estate broker proposal. Phyllis and David on that, we have. Well, we went up, we went up for um, proposals for the commercial, the services of the commercial David, real estate. David, you speak up, it's a little hard to hear you. Oh, sure. We went out to uh, bid for uh, commercial real estate broker services to help with the uh, sale of the North Hadley Village Hall, the idea of maximizing the potential money as well as the beneficial use of the property for the neighborhood. We received one proposal, uh, and so we typically do an evaluation, uh, and I was just looking for guidance from the select board as to how we wanted to proceed. is better than none. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I could say that about the North Hadley Hall. We could like to move this along. So really our only other option would be to open it up to non-commercial uh, realtors, which I've been told by several residential realtors it could be handled by them. 
but it's just a matter of whether we want to wait longer or see what we can do with this. So. Maybe inclined to see what we can do with this. Mm -hmm. Forward with this. Well, did they submit the price page? I didn't see that. By law, we by law we can't get into the price can't page until okay. you've uh, decided what to do. Okay. Technically, we rank the top three since we have one. If the we if we find this person to be acceptable, we can open up the price page and bring that information back. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to move forward with uh, Keller Williams. Keller yeah, Williams. Williams. Mm -hmm. Keller Williams. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Who wants to do the evaluation? Could be me. Could be a select board member. <coughs> evaluation of of the proposal to see if it meets the, the criteria or not. Happy to do it, but maybe somebody else wants to do it. Did you have something with? Um, conflict or something like that you were referring Oh, yes. You, thank you for reminding me. Yes. Um, I don't think I had that <laughs> conflict, but just to be squeaky clean, we can have Jennifer do it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Have Jennifer do it. Yeah. This one. That's fine. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Go forward with that. Uh, we have a Department of Conservation and Recreation announces its intention to acquire 5.64 acre partial of undeveloped forest in Hadley, and they would like us to waive our 120 day waiting period. Anybody have any thoughts on that? What's the waiting period for? If we Public wanted comment? to have, if we wanted to make a comment, or if we wanted to question, question. yes. Hi, I'm Hi. Jen Soper with DCR. Mm -hmm. Um, the 120 day waiting period is a requirement of state law that any acquisition that DCR does, um, if we're paying money for property, then we're obliged to notify the town about it. And if you waive the 120 day waiting period, it shortens the wait to 60 days. So, who? So and it's, this it's, is at, this it's is private the, property? It's private property. Um, it's on Hockenham Road, Route 47. It's right next to house number 88. And it's a wood lot next to 88. It has like 80 feet of frontage. So it's minimal, minimally developable. Um, and it's the landowner's request that we try to close this project as soon as we possibly can. So it's at, at her request that we asked for the waiver. <coughs> Any problems? I can make a motion that we waive the 100 day, 120 day waiting period. What's this project. Further discussion? Uh, what? Which house is 88? I think it's Nature Woods. Nature Woods, it's for sale. Little oh, one. Okay. It's little a little, little one. one. It's Almost gonna... across from Mitch's Marina. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. okay. All in favor of waiving the 120-day? Yes. Does this property go all the way down to the river? Nope. It's not on the river. It's not on the river. It's just no. on Hockenham. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, it's on the other side of Hockenham, too. Mountain it's on side. the mountain side. No, it's on the high side. He does own a yeah. property across the street from it. Yeah, a little cabin. Yeah. We're not buying that. Okay. Thank and, you. And that one also doesn't go all the way to the river. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's seats in the front. Thank you. They're fun. We don't bite much. It's not, really it's, yeah. it's not Halloween, so I won't bite you tonight. Uh, we already did the so church park updates. So what talked, did you? Yeah. You know, I talked to talked about the issues that are going on there. There's a change order for three thousand two hundred ninety-three dollars and seventy-five cents. The money is going to come out of the uh, Woodchuck uh, nominee trust. There's a balance of twenty-five thousand dollars in there for that purpose. So this is the first time we're touching that. No. Uh, we had to take three thousand two hundred and one dollars out in order to afford the contract. We took out another thousand dollars in order to do change order number one. So this will bring that balance down to 
seventeen thousand five hundred dollars um, but this would uh, take care of some of the existing problems that they have at the construction site okay so the, right the original balance was 25 yeah so this is going to bring it to 17. 17 five mm -hmm. yeah they're having some major issues up there i don't know if you drove by the <coughs> right. or not, but yeah. so this is a woodchuck nominee trust this is something that's co-administered by both the select board and the park and rec commission so the park and rec committee has to do we need to vote, vote on that too? yes you yes. do I'll um, make a motion to approve on the recommendation of the parking lot. Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Ready? Uh, I think we'll jump down quick to uh, we have an MMA meeting coming up in January, and that's going to be January 18th to the 19th. Um, if anybody is interested in going from the board, just to let us know. We have, a, we have a budget for your entrance fee for your hotel for your meals and parking. Okay. Count me in. Yeah. <laughs> Just my arm. I'm now. <laughs> yeah, I guess since I've never been, I may as well go. Oh, we might have Finally. A whole, a whole That's board. awesome. Yay. Yeah. All right. That'll be a good time. Uh, Greenfield Savings Bank has given us a donation uh, for their opening the other day. They are now situated here. There's a sign. So sign. we have a sign. <laughs> we have, a sign. A sign. <laughs> we have four benches have, that have been donated for us to put um, in the town of Hadley. So we can have designated spots. <coughs> suggestions where people would like to have them. I, I'd like to see one at the town hall and maybe a couple on the common. They'll arrive in about three weeks and so. Uh, okay. We'll make the final See what other ideas are out there? Sure. We could add some bus stops, you know, bus stops in town, could use some benches at that. Whatever you guys want to do with them. That would be the PBTA. Yeah. We'll donate yeah. a couple yeah. of things. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Keep them for ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then the Town of Hadley uh, has a promotional video featuring the Town of Hadley. Yeah, John, do you, do you want to talk a little bit about this project? <coughs> Well, it's just David asked us to put together a little um, video with um, kind of promoting the town of Hadley and um, showing what a great place it is to live. We put, put a draft together and showed him. And I think I can play it on that television right now, if you like. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
John, where shall we be using this? Well, I think the first uh, question is, do you like it? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, very sure. nice. Then we'll use it. Then we'll use it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we're going to stick it on TV and huh. key places like before and after, before or after meetings. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I mean, we can all also uh, modify it to, to suit your needs. Take the logos out, put different logos in, whatever it is that you guys want to use it for. Mm -hmm. Did we get permission from all those businesses to use their logo? No, we didn't. That's what that's the first thing David said to you. <laughs> Probably ought to ask them but first. These these things are visible from public ways. So, so uh, maybe to the Chamber of Commerce and yeah. potential businesses that are looking mm -hmm. at the area. Mm -hmm. Realtors. Yeah. Also something to send to potential candidates for employment. Mm -hmm. This is a way to showcase the town for municipal purposes such as promotion, economic development, uh, and uh, a whole host of uses, and we can make more of them too. Yeah. P PBS? Well, on, uh, you know, the... Yeah. Actually, on 191? Yeah. Sure. Well, uh, yeah, on 191, but the, isn't there another uh, PBS station? Oh, you have to pay them, though. Oh, you got to pay them. Oh. <coughs> <laughs> your question? Yeah, I just wonder if you could add, I like that you highlighted all the chain shops that people from outside will recognize, but Hadley has some really cool independent businesses. You might want to add a slide with some of those logos. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 In fact, when I was looking at the Northampton one, they go all out and say, you know, here's this, here's Spoletos, here's the Academy of Music, here's all the great things in our town. And we didn't really go there, but we, we certainly could. I'd like to see Eddie, Eddie Foreman's orchestra a little bit on that or something. Some little <laughs> Polish way there. Can I ask you to get the music? Uh, that was just a public stock public. track that I use uh, and I play a little guitar over the top of it. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of boring. I'll, 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 I'm a player. I was curious. Okay. <laughs> over here. Could you Tom. use a drone shot of the uh, Summit House? Because one of the public televisions that have it view of Hadley has it flying over the Holyoke Range of mountains and the Summit House. And the Summit House is a significant feature of the town of Hadley. Absolutely, yeah. We, we, we got some footage from the top of, um, from yeah. the Summit House. Something similar like you did the North Hadley Pond movie. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, that's what well, we need a drone. They're getting cheaper and cheaper. Mm -hmm. We're going to put that in our wish list. I think, <laughs> I think we have a drone. I think we have an Air Force. Really? Yeah. Uh, we, we use it for inspection, so rather than, send, rather than sending people up to the roof in unsafe conditions, really? we send the drone up there. So talk to the fire department. Talk to talk to Mike. Fire Mike. Mike. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. Okay. I will. There's also that radio controlled airfield in the um, in the honey pot. They, if you can't get what you're looking for from them, they might have a plane that can do it. You know, I drove by that one day when there was a thing going on, and I was kicking myself that I didn't have a camera with me because that would be that would, that would be a great clip to put in there. What, but what you've done is great. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Excellent. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. All right. We'll stay tuned for the next viewing. All right. So we did that. We did that. All right. Building uh, updates. Some building updates. Uh, fire substation. Fire substation. We're still meeting. We'll meet next week on the 16th. <coughs> Two weeks. On the 16th is our next meeting. How'd the uh, presentation go? I think they had like six people that came. So I went there briefly. Went briefly. And, uh, it was good, you know, mm -hmm. to see it and everything. I hadn't seen it before, so. Mm -hmm. So probably at town meeting they can actually have, you know, another viewing of it there so people can see it, get it out um, so it's visible. Uh, and that's where we are right now with them. And how about the library? Uh, library, we're uh, moving forward with the schedule. I uh, can't remember when our next meeting is, but uh, I believe we same update as, as last time in terms of this point, you know, we're now on to the interior uh, design phase. Um, we're on schedule. So I don't know if anybody else is here from the library. Um, although after we talk about the senior center, I did have a question that relates to both projects. So, Okay, senior center update. We met with the architects yesterday and are pursuing the 10,350 square foot uh, 
floor plan that we will make some obvious changes will have to be made to the building and we're still working on what that's going to look like so we can have the footprint so we can go back to the planning board. Mm -hmm. We're meeting with them again next week. Okay. So we have a OPM services additional services request um, from Colliers International. This is something that you reviewed and recommended. Um, and their contract runs out at the end of December because of the time period that has elapsed during this project. Mm -hmm. okay, so that needs to get voted on tonight? Yep. Okay. Do you want to make a motion on that now? Sure. Okay, I can make a motion that we vote to extend uh, Collier's contract until the end of the Senior Center project. Okay. Second it. Okay. Any further discussion? All those and in favor? And then the, the money's within your budget. You're still That's within right. budget. Mm -hmm. okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so the question that's come up is the, you know, after the last select board meeting, the OPM and architect on the library um, kind of went back and dusted off a, a joint site plan that had been worked on previously. And I think that maybe the OPMs are looking for some direction from the select board right now in terms of um, the most expeditious path to November 20th would seem to be to, to just downsize the building and kind of touch as little as possible. Um, but the question is out there whether or not it makes sense to kind of take a relook at the green space relative to the two projects together to see if the library, well actually both projects can buy back some of that green space. Um, and my, my first reaction to that is it would seem like that would be the prudent thing to do. I mean, why, why not try to make the... Well, I thought that's what we had said anyway. As long as the two to one parking was met, that there at least gives them an opportunity to put back some of the green space, and I think that was said but, but it's at one of the meetings. I mean, that doesn't mean that the project's not going to get passed because you've added a little more green space. They're looking to make sure that their requests are met um, and it's staying within their bylaws, which was the parking, the lighting, and I think David Tudor went down the list that night of. Uh, what needed to be done, and I think if they just stick to that and they can have a little extra green space, I don't see a problem. I, I, I don't either, but the, I'm just raising the question was asked. There's, you actually have an email today. I did see it. Okay. That's why I'm saying what I'm saying. Okay. Well, so the, but the question is what I was reading was that the concern is that that may take some time, and my thought is that as long as they bring whatever they're working on as quickly to planning board as possible so that planning board has a chance to kind of say, oh, whoa, you know, whatever. I think there's some sensitivity that the more changes that are made, that it might introduce something on November 20th unnecessarily. But right. I would hope that as long as they stay in touch with the planning board prior to that, and again, make it the best joint I mean, site plan possible. I, can, I talked to Jim last weekend about an issue, and I'll give Jim a call again, because that's what we had said at the mm -hmm. last meeting. So if they're... <coughs> Wondering about green space, I will give Jim a call about it and see if that's going to make yay or nay on that decision, which I don't think it's going to, but I will talk to him about it. And I think the live from the library, from um, Mark and Phil's standpoint, Phil being the architect in the library, there was <coughs> some clear direction that, you know, you're only focused on the interior right now. You're not doing any work on the joint site plan. So if, if we're saying that we want them to put the best plan possible together, it may pull the library back into it a little bit, but uh, again, I think that that's the right way to go as long as the planning board's kept in the loop every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could I, I was thinking of this and thinking that, you know, we're pretty close to having the concept of the redesign. Um, you know, we were presented a bunch of ideas this week, and next week we're hoping to vote on a path forward. Um, and just keep in mind that the planning board, the sooner that you get the plans to them so they yeah. can review it, is much better off for all of us. Well, what I was going to say is that if we get that solidified or roughly solidified, we kind of have a footprint. We could play with the site plan on and do we want to have a joint meeting to try to have a conversation, even if it's a smaller joint 
meeting so it's not really confusing um, between kind of the library and senior center to get some feedback and see what we want to go forward because I, I know that redesigning the site plan will affect the drainage plan and all these other things that will add more cost and add more time and et cetera. So shouldn't affect the drainage plan that much. But but if it affects if we, it at all, yeah. it's still a change. Yeah. And I think that's so clearly that's there's some concerns. Yeah. <laughs> well, what if before we even have the footprint done, if you guys have a, a concept or an idea that you've agreed to pursue, then go at least go to the planning board with the idea and say, would, would this work before we actually spend the money to, to have the architects draw it? Is that something that could be done? That way we can keep them in the loop? I, th I think if we, ha if we could have a joint meeting, maybe come up with a couple concepts that we can all somewhat agree on, right. maybe then go to the planning board with, does this work? Yeah. Because you know, one thing we were thinking about with the redesign is how we can, you know, do we need to get more parking by redesigning or can we use the existing parking area? You know, there's a lot of considerations with that. So, um, but the eastern side of the building is kind of fixed where it's got to be because of a wetland buffer. So, okay. I don't know. So, yeah. and maybe we can talk more. Yeah, we can talk yeah. more and then I want to make sure um, now Allison's chair of the committee that she's in the loop because mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, the only correspondence I saw was with Mark and, and Phil Bryan. So. Okay. okay. All right. I think the idea of a joint library senior center committee sitting at the same table and just have instead of having our OPMs talk to us, mm -hmm. talk to you, yeah. and then they work. I think putting the actual participants in the same room at the same time is a really good idea. Yeah, and I get to jump the gun and do something before we kind of have our design. Well, I think we could so start. We could start. We could start because we have a rough idea of what it will look like. That sounds good to me. I'm sorry, everybody okay with that? Yeah. So why don't you go ahead? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll figure we'll something out. Yeah. With the, the okay. All right, I think we're just to write about now on 7.30. And actually, we're at the end of our agenda, too, so that's great. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we can roll right into the um, partnership with Kessel Trust and DCR in regards to uh, a few pieces of a few acres of property, need, needless to say. Um, they have asked uh, for the town to, I guess, more or less give them the 320 acres of uh, land that is on, that abuts um, the Holyoke Range uh, off of Tahara Road, Bay Roads. No, okay. so it's, it's a conservation restriction. It's not actually given. Conservation. Restriction. Restriction. Yeah, we're not asking to, to be given the land. Okay, so you want the town to do a restriction. Correct? That's right. Make sure we get that right. Yeah. Okay. And then also there's 40 acres, um, eight parcels of land that are the town is uh, currently going to acquire for back taxes. Um, and that has uh, been asked also. And um, so we're going to take them two separately. So we'll do the 320 <coughs> acres uh, first. It has been recommended by our Conservation Commission. Um, to go forward with this, and we have had several emails um, throughout the past week, two weeks since we had our last meeting. Um, people have had phone calls with other people in regards to yay or nay on this um, project. And I, I think one of the most important things is that if, if we did go forward with this, the one thing that was mostly on people's mind is that we have a contract with Kessel Trust and DCR that um, lets that land still remain open for fishing, hunting, snowmobiling, biking. Uh, we even received a, um, a letter from uh, the bikers, the mountain bike people. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah and yeah. Um, they already have talked with DCR and have had uh, sure. other other properties that they have set up with them. So. To me, I think that's a really important thing that in the contract that we do sign that these things are made explicitly so that it still remains open for use uh, within the town for the town people. Sure, and, and as I said at the last meeting, and, um, and I, I sent some language to select and fill as well, uh, mm -hmm. some example language which the lawyers would you know, then tweak and, 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 and come up with a document that would um, ensconce the, the right to the public to continue to use these lands. 
for the recreational purposes which they've been used consistently over the years. So hunting, fishing, hiking, mountain biking, snowmobiling on a designated trail. Um, and uh, right now, as it stands, um, uh, the land isn't protected in any way. In the future, potentially a future town could, could decide that it doesn't want hunting out there and ban it. If you were to put a conservation restriction on that land, there could be language in there that would guarantee that hunting, fishing, and these other uh, hiking would all be allowed to continue on the land indefinitely. So there is some protection that, that would be built into that conservation restriction, which would add um, uh, uh, a guarantee that, that going forward it would be able to be used for those purposes, which doesn't exist now. Other board members? I, I met with Mr. Gagnon and uh, Mr. Horowitz last week to talk about this, and um, one of the concerns that I brought up, other than maintaining that access to the property and that use of the property for residents, was the um, the need for some public outreach and education as far as what's permitted on Kestrel lands. Yes. And uh, there is no signage. Um, Skinner State Park hunting is prohibited in Skinner State Park, but you've got a lot of DCR employees that believe that all state-owned land is Skinner State Park and all hunting is prohibited from all state lands. And uh, as some of these guys can probably attest to that are hunters, it's, uh, it's not uncommon to be run off of state lands when you are lawfully hunting there because of employees that don't know. Um, there's, there's no boundary signage whatsoever in Skinner State Park. Um, so that's something that we talked about, uh, maybe getting donations or getting people to go put up signs, working with DCR, some, something along those lines to uh, demarcate the, the area where hunting is prohibited and where hunting is allowed. Um, also we talked about um, kiosks or something along those lines where, uh, you know. Yeah, so, so I, I think there's, there's a couple different things going on. First off, it's important to realize that the the, the town land for which the conservation restriction would be placed on would still be owned by the town. And so the town would have control. It wouldn't be DCR land at that point. And, and the, you know, the way to inform people about, you know, what is allowed on that land is where the access points are to put up a kiosk and to say these are the things you can do out here, um, daylight hours, whatever restrictions you want to have on, on when people can be out there. And, uh, and, and to have some kind of boundary marking, which if the project goes forward, there would be a survey that, that, that would be paid through the grant money uh, done, and so we'd be able to find the boundaries and, and mark those boundaries in a way that lets people know when they're on the land and not on the land. Um, there's a separate issue of, of, of um, clarity about where people can hunt on DCR lands and, and, and other lands. Um, and that issue, I think, you know, we could be probably best resolved if we all sit down together, DCR, the town, people in town, and figure out, brainstorm a solution to that lack of clarity. Um, and uh, Peter is here today from DCR, and uh, Dean is here from the Conte to, you know, if there are any questions about <coughs> that particular issue, that you know they, they could address that. Um, but but I think we can resolve that in a way that doesn't um, short circuit this valuable conservation project. One well, Paul, would there be? Sorry. Would there be a way to, I mean, one of the things I was thinking along the same lines is um, signs are good and everything, but, mm -hmm. you know, everybody receives information differently, and, and when you're talking about large tracts of land, I mean, it's difficult to really um, fully mark them, you know, so that people can get their heads wrapped around it, but would it be possible to commit to um, an annual information session, you know, something maybe in advance of hunting season or whatever that was yeah. DCR, a after you have the meeting, the meeting being critical, but once everybody knows what the rules are, <coughs> come together and then present that so hunters or fishermen or conservation people, whoever want to go hiking, can find out exactly what that is. <coughs> I mean, I, I can't speak for DCR or, or the people of the Conte, and they can address that themselves, but, but um, certainly, Kestrel, we could do some outreach. If we were to hold that conservation restriction, we could certainly do outreach. And I, I know that in other conservation areas in New England, there is kind of a, a, a thing that happens on, on lands where hunting is allowed that, that specific signage is then put up in that season, alerting people that are walking their dogs and biking and stuff mm -hmm. out there that hunting is allowed. It's a multi use area. And to expect that and to, you know, you know uh, go out there with the appropriate clothing on and, 
and be aware that that is an activity that's, ha that's going mm -hmm. on out there. I so. mean, there are certain times of the year that certain hunting seasons are available between deer and bear and sure. turkeys and you know, <laughs> yeah. whatever else is. And there's all of those things are up on that mountain. So, I mean, they're in my backyard. So, right. um, you know, it's part of yeah. and I think important the for the town of Hadley to still be able to of course. Use, use that land. Of yeah. course. And, 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 and we, you know, we're committed to drafting language which the town attorney would review and David, I'm sure, would review and your conservation commission could review to, to ensure that that language is the right fit to ensure that those things continue. Conti's email, did you send that email, sir? No, that's uh, Andy French. Oh. I'm Dean Ryan, I'm the deputy manager. Okay. Uh, uh, Andy he French. kind of spelled that out for the, the hunting part of it anyway on Conti and land on Louis Bridge. Yes, uh, that's because open handicap, from hunting. Handicap accessibility area. That's correct. That was kind of spelled out there pretty well. Yes, it did. So you can uh, hunt all of that land? All of, all uh, of Moore Moore Ridge. Except for where the Universal Access Trail is. There's a the safety zone around there. The Handicap Accessible Trail. So how, how far, how much of a safety zone? Uh, it's whatever the state regulations are. I think it's um, uh, uh, 200, either 250 feet or 400 feet. It's a big difference, especially <laughs> there <laughs> yeah. along well, the river where it's not that wide it's, anyway. I believe it's 150 feet, feet from the trail. Pardon me? 150 feet. 150 feet. Oh, it, it's clearly marked. But that's okay, so what about handicapped hunters? Can they use your handicap access to hunt that land? Uh, we are currently not offering uh, uh, that area for uh, handicap accessible hunting. Why not? Well, that hasn't actually been proposed. There are handicapped hunters in this town there that would love to hunt that land. I think that's another issue that we could take up with Conti's. We're right now we're focusing in on the 320 acres, and the Conti land came up at the last meeting, but it had really nothing to right. do per se with the 320 that's acres. Correct. So, uh, George, a question for someone from uh, Kestrel: You you have the rights to quite a bit of land in Hadley. Uh, several places, Mount Wanna Road, and other places that, as far as I'm aware, have been posted. <coughs> so, for you to come in and say that, oh yeah, we can have hunting on this land that you're going to manage, um, I question it. Why some of this land that has been hunted for years? I think you're mistaken about what land we own and what is posted. We, we don't have any land that's posted against hunting and have, We don't own any land that's posted against. You hunting. don't control any of it. We don't own it. Uh, any land that is that is posted against who uh, controls uh, Mount Warner, uh, Mount Warner, the hiking trails that were put in? Was it uh, a Castro project? Trustees and reservations. Yeah, different group. So, different group. So, uh, Matt, yeah. yep. uh, so I'm Kristen with Castro Land Trust, and I, I think the video earlier showed that Hadley has a tremendous, tremendous beauty and, and ecological value and farming value, and there's been a lot of land conserved with willing sellers in town. So landowners who wanted to conserve their land, some are here today, maybe we can hear from them. Um, and I think maybe the clarification that people are looking for is, uh, you know, who, who owns what? Who's, what's still private? Because a lot of it is still privately held. Um, what does the state own? What does the, the county own? Uh, what is trustees reservations? You know, Kestrel actually only has one parcel at this point, uh, just across from Porter Phelps Huntington Museum. Um, but I, I think that's the clarification and the map that really works so that people can understand what their access points are for, for mountain biking, for hiking, for, for hunting. I think I think all those things could be clarified. Well, is, is on Mooney Beard Road in South Maple, you have signs up there. It's Kestrel, preserved by Crest and Kestrel, correct? That, so that air is it? I, I guess is is that open to hunting, <coughs> and is that controlled by you guys or not? The one on Moody Bridge, Moody Bridge, Moody Bridge and South, South Maple, Maple with yeah. the Valley Land Fund sign there. Um, that's actually private land, and then across the way is Conti land. So in, in some cases, a private landowner will donate a conservation restriction on their land. They still own the land, and they, as a donor of that land, have the right to want. visit. Right, exactly. And so that may be what you're seeing occasionally. So one of the questions that And if you have their permission to hunt on their land, that's... Right, you can go knock on their door and ask them. And but under Mass Law, you don't you need permission if it's not hunting. It's a, it's a commonwealth, so if, I mean, if it's not posted, you're allowed to hunt there. Okay. But, uh, but one of the issues that I brought up with Paul was 
most snowmobilers, most hunters are fairly conservative when it comes to abiding by the laws. So when they see a preserved by Kestrel sign, from what I've heard, most people avoid those areas, whether hunting's permitted or not, because there is no clarity whether it's open, whether it's not. There's, uh, I went on Kestrel's website, and the only mention of hunting is it says that it's permitted on s certain areas. I don't remember what the terminology is, but it says it's permitted in basically some areas of the lands that you manage. But there's no map. There's no information about where it's permitted, where it's not. There's no information about where it's prohibited completely. Um, so one of the things that I said I'd like to see if we were to move forward with the 320 acre parcel is that actual signs, since it's town owns la own land, saying that hunting, snowmobiling, whatever is permitted on these parcels in a map to show that. Because there, there, there's there's no way for people to find that side. I think that's what Kristen had said. That I, I think it's a great idea to have a map so that everybody can see just what is designated where. And if, if it's still owned by town or private properties, even though that they turned it over to Kessel, it's still open for uh, use of, by Hadley people. Mary? I just want to comment that about a dozen years ago, my family um, put a conservation restriction on 110 acres on Mount Warner. I was very involved. It was Valley Land Fund, which joined with Kestrel um, since, and Terry Blunt with whatever the DCR was called at that time. And there was a lot of conversations about what we as landowners wanted to permit and what they wanted to see in a conservation restriction. For example, we said, well, we might want to put up a small structure just to observe stars in or something, and so they put that in. Um, and then it was really up to the landowner what we wanted on the property. And it's, you know, you think, well, you know, you want to conserve it, but you also want what would it needs to be in 100 years, so you're trying to think that through. And they were wonderful to work with. They were very much wanting to make sure we were very happy with what we were deciding. But it was our choice, and we still own the land. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. And we can we can certainly you know, um, and I think it's it's uh, it's one of our aims to have kiosks up on land that, which we own. But this land is is going to be owned by the town, and we're glad to partner with the town on on crafting signage or whatever at the kiosk, at, at the trailheads or other access points that would let people know what activities are allowed out there, including hunting and fishing and whatever else. What, what percentage of Kestrel managed land is huntable right now? <laughs> so Kestrel, Kestrel um, uh, I, I can't remember exactly, Kristen can tell you how many properties we actually own in the, in the valley, but only one of those properties is it, where hunting is specifically prohibited. And, and that's in Granby, and it's it's because it's a weird configuration of land, and, and with boundaries that are close to some residential areas, and the neighbors of, like, but out of I think it's like forty, do we own forty or so, forty or so pieces of land in the valley, and that's well. the only that's the only one. So, but, so that it's that it's specifically prohibited. That's owned land, though, not. Managed. That's land we own. Yeah. So, and that's the, that's no, we, don't, we, don't land land we don't manage. We don't manage. We don't we don't manage land that we, we don't own. So I think that the distinction here is that our role normally, as we did with farmland and, and Lake Warner, is, is to facilitate the, what the town's open space plan is, and that's why the Conservation Commission has supported us. And we work in partnership with public agencies like DCR and the Conti. And so in this case, we're proposing a partnership with the town to formalize the protection that you've already given the, the land in in concept, right? No one's talking about developing those 320 acres. Um, and in so doing, you can help us leverage more money to bring to the Mount Holyoke Range for additional conservation that could be on private land that l farmers still own, like we did with the Barstow Farm, um, but it also could be DCR land uh, to add to the state park. So. Uh, that's our goal. What, what is the advantage to the town of Hadley to let you manage it? We wouldn't we manage it. Or put restrictions on it. Or, or yeah, I guess what's, I'm not, I'm not. There's, there's so more what, government. What, so if it stays the way it is and the town of Hadley has no agreement with you, the land is still open to whatever, whatever the select board at the time deems it. I mean, if they don't want a snowmobile trail through a certain piece, they have the right to, to block it or whatever. But once you start putting, start calling stuff conservation land, um, it just seems like more and more restrictions end up on this 
and I think and then all of a sudden you find some but I think plant our, and then it's banned for for everything. So that's I think that's our what I goal is to keep conservation land non buildable so it can remain hunting, fishing, um, all that land snowmobiling, so that you can use it as a recreational area, but it's still gonna be conserved and it's not gonna be buildable. And it seems like we can leverage this land in the conservation <coughs> to conserve more land, possibly, instead of just not getting anything and possibly opening ourselves up to more developments. All that land was owned by farmers originally, right to the top of the mountain. There were the farmers' woodlots originally, mm -hmm. and most all the families in town owned to the top of the mountain. I believe you people did too at one time and through Hockenham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred and, and since DCR took over, we've been ruled and regulated to death. We really have. And, and the hunters and the sportsmen as a whole are just <coughs> rule and regulated to the limit right now. I mean, her comment last meeting was, oh, you can do whatever you want on your property. Well, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. We had, we had permission from all the landowners at one time to maintain those trails before DCR ever bought the top of that. Shell. Question wait, with wait a minute, Shell. <coughs> let him have a chance. Just one second. Go ahead. Thank you, Joyce. Um, first, I want to thank David Phil uh, for having that meeting with Paul and me that I requested. And one of the things that we talked about in that meeting is that um, it was already 18 years ago that this town saved the 100 acres right next to Skinner State Park and added it, I believe, <laughs> to Mount Holyoke Grange State Park uh, through the Save the Mountain campaign that I founded. And during that campaign, we discovered that there was a consensus in Hadley that open space preservation was a huge value, no matter where you are politically, no matter what part of town you live in, everybody wanted it. This, um, and you know, the Mount Holyoke Range and the, the 300 something acres um, off Chamura that we're talking about tonight are both open right now to many uses. Skinner is much more restrictive, but that was a deed when the Skinner family gave that land to the state they put conditions on it. So the Mount Holyoke Range State Park, which is immediately abutting, and the parcel that was added to it, and then it connects with the Chamorro parcel, it's a big swath of land. Uh, hunting and snowmobiling is permitted. And I, frankly, as a hiker, those are places that I avoid during uh, October, November, December, because I don't particularly want to get shot. Um, but, you know, I, I would totally support uh, David's request that there be better signage up there. It would be nice to know when you're stepping from Mount Holyoke Range State Park where you can hunt to Skinner where you can't and vice versa so that during hunting season I choose not to cross that line going east. I would stay on the Skinner side. Um, but you know ultimately what we're trying to do here is to permanently preserve this area so nobody's going to throw houses up on it. And that was the issue with Save the Mountain, and that was why we had such strong community support, is because nobody, except for the developer and about five of his friends, actually wanted to see houses going up that mountainside right next to Skinner State Park. So if we keep that larger goal in mind, and we can find that prop by leveraging these pieces, we actually enable to preserve more land that can be used for hunting, used for snowmobiling, used for fishing, and used for hiking and mountain biking and all the rest of it. So I, I'm hoping that the town will provide the letter of endorsement that Kestrel is looking for tonight and uh, hoping that either uh, Paul or Kristen will talk more specifically maybe for the people in the room who are not as familiar about what that means. Okay. Anybody else? Question, when you put this uh, designation on it, I know the town of Hadley is always uh, They've always managed their forests pretty good. They've, they've logged up there. They've maintained the roads. Um, so when you put this this on there, is that going to affect the ability for the town to to log up on the mountain if they if if the forest needs it? I mean, honestly, no. Um, no. So they, 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 so they, once they, you put that on, it won't or will? No, it won't affect it because you'll have a set of restrictions in there that will allow for forestry according to best management practices for forestry. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. And, and all that, so it's, it's done the, the, a way that keeps a healthy forest. Right, and but you're, you're just, your statement is a set of <coughs> restrictions. We What's don't that? have any restriction right now. It's our land. But we're, we're the ones that will be drawing up the contract right. with our lawyer 
to make sure that we're going to maintain an area that will be usable for everybody just as it is now. Um, but that is our intent. The Bay Road Reservoirs were donated probably way back when from one of the, the landowners and farmers down there. So having it open to all all uh, recreation <coughs> is, is a big issue. So the process would be if we were to move forward with this. I sign go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say we would sign this letter of intent. And then we'd work on drafting a restriction. Well, well, the process would be to, 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 to yes, to come up with a letter of intent saying you support it. And then we would be able to actually, with you, with the town, with other partners, DCR, with the town of Amherst, who's also going to be potentially conserving some land as part of this project, and, and, and perhaps South Hadley, we don't know. but. But um, uh, uh, would all sign on to say, yeah, we we we'd like to move forward with this project. We submit an application to the state. They they look at it. They usually approve these these kind of things. We can't guarantee they will, but they usually do. And we would go out and get appraisals on the various pieces of land that would be part of this greater project, including the 320 acres, and um, uh, uh, and then start coming up with the, the language for the, the purchases and the conservation restrictions. But this would come back in front of the select absolutely. board or absolutely. Above, um, the language right. of yes. the Absolutely. You're not, right. well, we You're could not, form a work group if we wanted yeah. to to make sure we had adequate representation from mm -hmm. various right. constituents. Quick question. You just mentioned with the, in the contract there'd be a purchase. I thought the town owned this, or just you're purchasing it's, the rights. It's, it's, the state no, it's is not a you are. it's not a contract. It, it, what it is, it's a conservation restriction. So you s the town still owns the land. All it's doing is, well, it's doing a couple things. It is guaranteeing that you can do the things you already do out there, which doesn't seem like a big deal because you can already do that. But the other thing that it's, the two other things that it's doing is, it's permanently guaranteeing that those things are going to, you'll be able to do those things forever. So right now, a future iteration of the town could sell that land. They could decide they don't want hunting out there. But this particular conservation restriction would ensconce hunting and fishing and hiking as a as a public right out there forever. So you get that permanent protection of that right to use the land in that way. So the it, second thing that it would do would, would be would allow us to leverage dollars, state dollars funding that's available, which we wouldn't be able to apply for that funding without this 320 acres of land because they need 500 acres in a roadless area. And so we've got other landowners, but without this 320 acres, we won't come up with the 500 acres. We won't be able to, to leverage the 1.25 million possible dollars in state money to, to conserve more land. Um, so it allows us to conserve more land by simply agreeing that, that, uh, that you can continue to do the things that you're already doing out there. So my question is, if we put this restriction on there, guaranteeing hunting, fishing, snowmobiling, whatever, on there, and uh, 20 years down the road, this land is sold to the state, to Silvio Conti, whatever, or, um, to, DCR, or to DCR, who, who tend to restrict land, or if they try to make it part of Skinner State Park, does that mean that that restriction still stands, and no yes. matter who owns it, and no yes. matter what they try to do, it's perpetual. It's perpetual, and and there's, and there's no possible way to remove that. Restriction. Well, the only possible way to remove it is is eminent domain. So if if, if the town or you know uh, wanted to put a highway through there someday, it, it just the process of eminent domain, which which it can apply anywhere, or the or or wanted to put up a high school there or something like that. So. Yeah, for a landing strip. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean that's the only way that they can you know, the conservation restrictions can be extinguished is through eminent domain. Uh, no, there's never been a successful extinguishment of a conservation restriction in the United States to date, um, except by eminent domain. So could the, the state come in and say we need this land for Skin for Skinner State Park and um, take it that way? I don't think so. I don't think so. I can address that. I think Skinner State Park was a specific land grant from the Skinner family. I don't think it can be added to. Well, they're uh, buying, five, they're range, buying five acres. Can I? Can I please finish? Oh, I, I'm commenting on your, your question. Well, let me if, finish my comment and then you can comment. Um, Mount Holyoke Rain State Park. They can add to Mount Holyoke Rain State Park. Allows hunting. It allows snowmobiling. It allows a lot of this stuff. But the state, the state isn't. Um, 
it's hard to conceive of a of a um, a scenario in which the state would apply its dollars in terms of legal money and stuff to, to conserve something that's already conserved. It's just, it's not a conceivable. So, so my issue is we just tonight discussed this letter from um, DCR that's purchasing 5.64 acres uh, along Hockenham Road and adding it to Skinner State Park. With a willing to sell Because it abuts Skinner State Park. And so that's it, okay. But it would I'm be abutting the existing Skinner State Park. So. It would be managed as part of the existing Skinner. The water department properties, kind of a different side of the uh, the Skinner. But that no five hunt acres line. will also be off limits to hunting and snowmobiling, correct? Because it'll be part of the Skinner State Park where that activity is prohibited. Well, or it will be property around it. It will be property around the 375 acres gifted to DCR by J.A. Skinner. It will be surrounding those 375 acres. The ultimate decision regarding hunt, no hunt, hasn't been made yet, but I wanted to be clear that that land abuts Skinner, so it would be managed with Skinner. Um, the water department lands are well away from this area, from the Skinner area, so there's there, it just simply wouldn't make sense if, if you're looking at a map, the water department lands are, I don't even, I don't know how far, at least half a mile away from the Skinner area. So it just wouldn't make sense to have two parcels not contiguous with Skinner managed as Skinner. That wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, it would be managed as Mount Polio. But you don't have an answer whether it be hunt or not hunt. You don't on have the that five answer. acres, <laughs> yes. which are now how far, how many feet away from a residence do you have to be? 500, 500 feet. feet. Okay, so that would preclude hunting on at least two acres of those five acres. So anyway. maybe, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's that's, just, that's I, I just think it's a de minimis area that we're talking I mean, about. The, 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 the current landowner right now could say no hunting. Yeah. Yes, they could. Right. Yeah. Okay. But, they, but so, it's not posted right now. But they could post it. Yeah. So but it's close to a house. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think it would be logical for a hunter to Diana. park on 47, and I, I just don't think that's really feasible. Diana. Michelle. Michelle. Michelle, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, somebody gave it to me. Where is the, there's going to be at least another 180 acres to make the 500. Where are those acres going to be? And my comment about them is that, you know, I, if those acres were up for development, you wouldn't be able to hunt on that property or for another 500 feet. Also, I don't know if it's Kristen or how you can answer this, if the other 100, um, 80 plus acres are going to be part of contiguous um, preserved land because yes. you're building up the reserve of animals that you can hunt if you have a continuation right. of habitat. And if it's fragmented with houses on that 180 acres, you're going to be diminishing your wildlife reserve. So I would think it's a win-win for hunters. Plus if houses go up, whatever other land is around those properties is going to be difficult to hunt or do snowmobiling around. That's that's correct, and I and I and, and you know just to address the uh, Slope and Phil's earlier uh, question about imminent imminent domain, um, uh, the state wanted to take land now through imminent domain they could. So I mean, it, 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 the only way to protect against imminent domain is through um, public outcry and 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 vote for people that aren't going to do those kinds of things. I mean, it, it, it's not something that that. One way or another can be prevented by by not putting this into conservation restriction or putting it into conservation restriction. So, okay. um, Tom, can I have Tom speak? Okay. If we could go back to the 320 acres, there's the town land, and we mentioned there's a town road to it. Is the town going to continue to maintain that road so that the townspeople will have access to those 320 acres? Is there going to be any parking facilities for the different varieties of outdoor activities of people involved in. I don't there's, there's, not, uh, there's not parking there now. We certainly aren't going to put a parking lot in there now. That's not how it's used. It's used for people to go into the reservoir. I think they have a 
yearly fishing derby, permit. correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. No, but it's by permit right now through us. Right, but I mean, permit. that's still fishing yeah. up there, whether you have to have a permit or not. I mean, but we don't have any set parking spaces up there. Uh, my concern is... And we're not going to. I don't, I'm not going to have the police police a parking area. This is going to be used for recreation, just as it is now, for snowmobiling, you can go from one end of town to the other up to the mountain and you can use those trails as you always always have. You've got hunters that go out there at certain times of the year. We want them to be able to do that also. So I, I mean it's really not going to change the use of that land. We don't intend it to be changed. That, that isn't the intent of this board is to have it have further restrictions on it. We want it to be able to be used as it's being used it now. And it'll enshrine those as permanent. Person. Excuse me. Pardon? It'll that enshrine those as permanent. Right. Those those current uses. That's Just right. for fishing. Yes. yes. Does the town have a commitment to maintain the town road so that 120 acres of town land is available to the town school? We don't mean, do we maintain it now? I'm asking John, hang on a second. That's why I asked. John, do we have, are we maintaining that road right now? Periodically for fire protection. I know we have for 300 years now since the farmers gave us that land and, and we built the reservoirs. The, the water department at that time were taking care of them and were maintaining them. Periodically, they don't get maintained, and the people with the snowmobiles and the four-wheelers, they do cut all the trees out, they do maintain the roads, they are law-abiding citizens, there are some hellions out there that cause trouble, and those are the people that make it bad for all of us recreational people. So, you know. Joyce, can I ask a quick I got, question? Uh, wait a minute, I got a, no, both those, re oh, both those reservoirs are are, are, and Tremor Road are posted, no trespassing. So when you make this conservation land, so we're gonna make it conservation land, you're gonna allow all this stuff, so all those signs are gonna come down? And it's open to everybody. And it's open to everybody. Right now, I think a parking permit is town residents only. Yes. I may be wrong. Fishing, so fishing permit. No, I think for parking, parking, you have to get a parking well, permit that's from... Um, that's Bay Road. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. That's Tr Bay Road. Tremor Road yeah. Reservoir has a big sign, Tres no trespassing. I was just going to say. So, yeah. at this point, the select board is really trying to help Kestrel, you know, get money to do more conservation, and I understand that. But the select board sounds like they, they're all for it, but the land that they own right now is posted. It, but you now you're saying we're going to allow all this stuff, and I, I really worry what happens when the final document comes out that it actually has all that stuff, and it's it's going to be someone's going to have to turn around and, and be right on top of it as residents or hunters or fishermen to make sure that all these things get put in because it sounds like once it's agreed upon, there's no change in it, and I really question that this is happening so quick where the town doesn't allow anything on it right now, but now they're gonna miraculously open it up for everybody to hunt, fish, snowmobile, everything. Well, what and you I, to, I question what you your to, ability you to like manage it. Shut it down to all well, the town's people now? I can that go, go I up can there and use it now? That's not common sense, I can, George. I can Are you gonna open up and take all the signs down if this happens and open up the land to everything you just said, well, George, like, legally can happen? George, I can say that, I'll, I'll go on record and say that um, as far as the parking on Bay Road, I think the parking permit needs to stay with town residents because it's going to turn into disaster yeah, of yeah, yeah, residents. More town residents only. Yeah. For but sure. I would also like to see all the no trespassing signs come down off of all the property um, and open it up to, to use. If we're going to conserve it, it needs to be used. So, More town so residents. it's defeating the purpose of conserving it if we have no trespassing signs. Right. And well, that's what we have it's, now. it's confusing yeah, that as yeah, there's hunters there right. now, right. and a game warden drives by and sees a truck. And right. there's a no trespassing sign. Right. What, what is he going to think? Right. He doesn't know that the town said you can hunt there. Right. So he's going to stop and harass me. Right. I can tell you, I had it two weeks ago over on Chamorro Road. So I got by a DCR employee told, told that I couldn't hunt there when I was in the Well, I've been told by DCR employees that I couldn't <laughs> yeah. park at the reservoir. Well, just to clarify George's question, you know, again, going back to what Paul said, tonight what's being asked of us is to provide the letter of support. We're going to have time. You know, and I would hope that that time would include, again, making sure, you know, whether we have a, a work group or something to make sure all the stakeholders have a chance to, um, you know, express their concerns. And then education has to be an outcome of all of this. 
but we'll have time to address the language that you're talking about. So you're, you're we don't we don't have to you know we're not making promises tonight and it's a done deal. Wouldn't it be smarter to put together a group of, of the bikers, because I think there's some bikers over there that mountain bike, the hunters, the snowmobile, and have a committee to, to look at all the ins and outs because I don't think a whole lot of people, except for a few, can turn around and say that. I think I just said that. But, but do it before you do the letter and start this down the process. No, no, they, they're under a deadline for the letter. That's not our fault. Yeah, who cares? Hang on. That's not our fault. We're going we're gonna to give up the right. Hang on, hang on. The letter doesn't commit the town to doing anything except moving this thing to we're the next stage. We're just letting them move forward. We're not agreeing to any restrictions we can still, yet. We can still you know, pull the plug on this after the fact, but they're just trying to... So why why not? That's what they all why? say why? until what? it's too late. What is our advantage? I think what is our a, advantage? a committee, committee should be formed to look at everything for the townspeople we are and the recreational before you no. start allowing this people to. This is just to a letter of intent. Yeah. It has no bearings on it whatsoever. It's and if we decide right. after there is a contract that mm -hmm. needs to be signed and we want a work group that's going to develop that and get into that contract, what we want that's where it'll go to the next step. Mm -hmm. So there, there's still a process there. And don't laugh about it, I, mean, I, I just I'm I think we're putting the, the, It's the, a letter of intent. The cart in front of the horse is. in that we should be looking at it, should the town then even be involved in this, know what a letter then, you, intent then is. you move in. Yes, I do. No, you don't. And I know how all these uh, happens, in the, and it sounds like a good idea, but then when you want to, if it's, it could be, it, it can be almost anything, and then later, oh, we can't do that. Well, we've already signed the intent, and they've they've already got their 500 acres, and how they can't get out now because. Yes, we do. And that's what happens. That's no, not what's going to happen. It's what is the town getting out of this? Permanent, permanent. Usage. 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 And we already have permanent. We own we it. Know. We own it. You are at the whim of future boards. Correct. You're at the whim, so that is of, the whim. The, of the people of having, not the board. Because we elect the board. True, however, again, we all know how it works. So again, this is actually, I mean, I, I agree. I think this is better for hunting, fishing, snowmobiling. I'm really not understanding the argument. I totally get the argument about the fact that there have been a lot of miscommunication, lack of understanding, people being, you know, inadvertently harassed, not because somebody, I think, just felt like harassing David. I mean, I would if I saw him. But I mean, because just out of ignorance, like not realizing what the rules are. So I think the, the best outcome of this is that we're going to find out that maybe through communication, through, and I would propose an annual meeting in advance of hunting season for everybody's safety and, and pleasure, that... Amherst, Amherst does it right now. They have signs at the end of their trip. It's hunting season. Wear orange. So, so let's do it, too. I mean, so I would be all in favor that? of that, and I think that would be a very positive outcome of all of this. So, Paul, uh, what's the time frame that this would, and I know you're just, you got to estimate here, but right. what's the time frame where this would come back to the select board for a vote? Are we talking six months? So, the, the application to the state is going to be due in a, a few weeks. We send that out. And um, uh, I think by December we would hear back from the state whether the whether they find it acceptable, and then at that point, then we could say, okay, now we can move forward if we want to do it. If we want to do it, nobody's signing anything that says you have to do it, or or you're committed to do it. I, I mean, I, I, I consider myself an honest person. I wouldn't lie to you about that. So, um, so realistically, it would come back before this same board to make that final determination absolutely, not, absolutely. Not and after the next election. Right. And then when it comes time to draft the conservation restriction with the language in it, the town would have a back and forth with the people drafting it. We could provide an initial draft, but it would be a communication between the town, could be members of the Conservation Commission, could be a working group, the select board members, community members, whoever you, however you want to do it. We could come up with the language that you want and the town's attorney would review it, our attorney would review it, the state's attorney reviews it, and at the end of the day, we, we, we're crafting something that we all agree on and all agree that is going to support these rights to recreate on this land moving forward. Um, it's, it's, it's a, as Molly was saying, it's a, it's a win for everybody in the end, because more land can be conserved, we can permanently protect the right moving forward 100 years from now, 200 years from now, no matter what 
people want to say about what can be done out there and can't be done, those rights will still remain with that land regardless. Can I ask you a question? I mean, part of it is I don't totally understand it. If, if there's that conservation put on that land and nothing is put on it, what does that do to the land? What what does that do to the land with just with no add-ons that allow hunting, fishing, whatever? You're restricting the land from from development. You're restricting <coughs> the land from building. That's and that's it. Restrict. And that's the only thing it changes, unless you put all the caveats in it for snowmobiling, fishing, or anything else you're anybody thinks of. Restricting building, and you're permitting in perpetuity these uses that are all possibilities, the hunting, the snowmobiling, the fishing. And the last thing I want to mention is I see one positive that's come out of this meeting no matter what the decision is of the group tonight. You mentioned that there's no trespassing signs posted right now on the water department land. You'd like to see those signs removed. Sounds like that's already in process. So, so that's a that's part of what's happened already from from this discussion. I guess just kind of in a nutshell, what I'm kind of hearing is that what will be happening is an advantage to the hunters and fishermen is that the no trespassing signs will come down. That we're going to get kiosks with signs and maps showing which areas are huntable, fishable, and with that information there that there'll be less problems with the hunters and fishermen butting up against DCR because people don't know where the lines are. Oh, DCR, should, they're a state organization. They should know their own rules right. and where they are. All right. But they don't. But this will help. The bike with that. trails go across because private property since they bought the sun house. Yes. And so all the way from the Notch Visitors Center. Exactly. So, can I make a motion that we remove the trespassing signs on the 320 acres contingent upon up by the reservoir yes contingent upon Parker Reservoir and Bay Road Reservoir contingent upon the select board approving the conservation preservation so that we're on the record now that those will come down <coughs> if we come to an agreement and actually pass this conservation second well and I'd like to expand on that and the permits that we use for Bay Road can be used for Parker Reservoir also and for town residents only and, and we need to come and get a permit to park there. And for the the land I think the town owns land on Mount Warner too. Why don't we include that? Just so you know, you can't put up no trust you can't take those signs down and have it only for town residents. Once you take those no I, trespassing signs. I understand down. that, but the parking yeah. issue. Yeah, the parking there is. There is no parking. Yeah. 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 Correct, right. Yeah. 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 I don't want to buy those two trespassing signs. I understand that. But it used to be. I got, I got another drill. One more question. In the water. That was the original yeah. intent. Yeah. yeah. And it was still that no swimming took place in the residence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. But PCR has put up signs on private property that they don't own. Of no four wheeling on the end of Chimura Road. DCR doesn't own that land. Yeah. But they have I, I a sign one, there. Well, I got one more question for DCR. I don't know who wants to answer it or nobody. But do you still have a volunteer on the South Hadley side and on the Hadley side that maintain the bike trails with four wheelers? They don't maintain the bike trails. They mean they do some trail work. So you do have a motorized vehicle up there on the mountain on DCR land. Is that, that correct? That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Well, can I ask, can I I ask your concern about that? Because uh, I got one and I've been thrown off your property. But well, you allow them up there. If no, we do not. We you have. You just told me they you are got trail. One have, Lisa, they are. Right? They are. They are trail volunteers yeah. that have been granted authority to ride the trails by management. If you would like to petition to have be a trail volunteer and get that status, you are welcome to petition management and do the same thing. Other I, than that, you I cannot ride an ATV on that land. If you can ride it on Hadley land, no problem, but not on DCR property. I had permission from all those farmers before they gave that land. It doesn't to matter. They don't own that land now. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. That, that's the point I'm trying to make. Right. Okay. Nobody's transferring ownership of yeah. the land. Yeah. So, right. Period. Go all right. I have, a, I have a motion on the table here. Can I clarify that here? So we're going to remove the tr no trespassing signs um, by the reservoir mm -hmm. on this 320 acres. We'll maintain the uh, resident parking only permits. Um, and what was, what was the other thing? Is that it? 
and then we'll issue the letter of interest. And that was, this is contingent upon the select board approving the conservation restriction in the end. Motion made and seconded. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 But now we got to get to the issue of voting on the weather to. And I'm going to make a motion that we uh, approve the request uh, that's been made by Castro, subject to, <laughs> with great clarity, um, subject sure. to um, a favorable negotiated outcome to allow for um, all of the outdoor enthusiastic activities that, that have been discussed tonight. Second. And friendly amendment. So, uh, just to be clear, this is on the 320 acres only, yes. not the additional 40 no, acres. We're on just the road. talking about the three parcels. And also that we will do a can we do a yearly hunt, hunt education or working group, and also agree. That to, can be put can into the. Yeah, can. That can be put into the contract. Yeah. This is just for a letter of intent right now. Mm -hmm. I can second the letter of intent motion. Okay. Any further discussion on the letter of intent? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 No. No. So it's four to one. Judge, you have a couple of questions? Yes. I do have a question. What you guys just voted on is just for the reservoir properties? Correct. Yes. Not Three. the low land? Correct. So how does that play We're in? We're going to do that next. Okay. Hang in there. Hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's next on the list here. I want to take them separately. Okay? And I, I, I just want to say if anybody. <laughs> I know there's a lot of concern about what you can do on Kestrel land and, and, and whatnot. If you have any questions or you want to come talk with me, absolutely, I would love to talk with you and, and I'll give you my contact information and we can go and, and chat about it. I'm glad to do it. We'll take a walk around the property if you want to. I'm very glad to do that. With absolutely you. love to do that. Uh, uh, any day I can get out of the office and be in the woods, <laughs> you give me an excuse, I'll come from there with you. Say, so. Paul, he's from New Hampshire. <laughs> Well, I, I won't hold that against you. <laughs> <laughs> Live free of that. So to be clear, that's just for the 320 acres, and it's just the letter of intent at this point. So we'll get a working group together to get the language done at some point. Correct. When, when we hear back from them, uh, we will form a letter, uh, form, a letter form a group, working group. Uh, and anybody that would like to join that is more than welcome to join. Okay. Send your name in, and we're more than happy to have you. Okay. Sure, we get everything covered to what we want, and I'm sure David will have that group. David, more than happy. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> right up your alley. All right. So next on the agenda is the uh, 40 acres, um, eight parcels of land that are uh, identified as tax parcels. So they're in the process of uh, probably being acquired by the town for back taxes, and. Um, Anticipates acquiring them soon. Is that correct, Linda? Well, um, we have five. Five of the properties five. are currently in tax title. We have we have tax title on them already, and they're all okay. the there are five of the properties. And I do have um, I do put something together in an email to all of you, but it just got so late. Um, but I do have a list of the five properties. How much is owing in taxes with each? Um, what their assessed value is. Do you and have a copy of identifying each one of us? I have. I can give them to each of you. Thank you. There's a set of a explanation in the, the list and the map. Um, so I know that there's eight mentioned in there, and I guess we own three of them already, but I honestly didn't know about those before now, so I haven't mentioned anything about those properties. They're not in they're not in my my workload right now. Apparently, this already happened before, and David and I did scramble a bit trying to find uh, the you know whether they were in tax. One was taken by tax title. I'm not sure um, how we acquired the other two. Do you know, Janice? I don't. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to find that out for you. But I was only thinking. I, I understood this to be about the five properties that I was working on. So uh, the process. So I don't know how much you need. Um, how far you need it to be along right now, but we've mentioned this uh, in town hall meetings from time to time that we didn't bring, begin the tax taking, uh, the foreclosure process because we don't own it to do anything with it until we foreclose on the prop on the properties, and we didn't want to begin it until we knew what we were going to do 
once we caught it, once we once we had these properties, what were we going to do with them? Are we going to sell them? Are we going to move them along? Because I think it's important to know what we were going to do with them because I don't think the town has access to them. I think they're along the river. Um, did we really want to owe them? You know own them, I mean, are there, are there some liabilities associated with it? So when this um, this last uh, couple meetings ago and, and talking with Janice and her saying that this is a possibility of moving it along into conservation, it's like, okay, we still haven't begun the process, um, and but we can. Um, that's about it. It doesn't happen quickly. It's probably, uh, we are, because they're all land of low value, we can do it more quickly than if we needed to go to tax court. Um, which is a process that can take, I know we had a few in uh, that have just resolved that it's taken a year and a half, but land of low value is on a shorter timeline. I think that we can be have them cleaned up in the next six months. Um, it will be a minimum of 30 days. Um, I do have a, a uh, an email in, a, and I have some contact with our attorney to see how quickly and he can do it and how much that would cost. It is something that we can do in in house, but honestly, I haven't done it before. And if this is something we want to move along, I think it's a good idea to find out um, what it would cost and how it, long it would take for someone who who knows what they're doing um, right off the bat. So I'm looking into that for you. And um, Castle um, Trust has suggested that the town gift or sell at the low market value uh, for the price of back taxes owed be interest in these parcels for possible. Inclusion in the Connecticut River Greenway State Park or the Conti National Wildlife Refuge. Um, David has had contact with several owners that have bought these lands, um, and they have shown interest also in acquiring them if they were going to go up for sale, or if there was going to be a transfer of below market value to Kessel Trust. So um, that's where we are with those pieces of property. You also bought the uh, pheasant hunting down there at all, down through ridges. Sure, you know. Absolutely. Uh, it looks like these first no. two do. Yeah, they stock it every year there. Yeah, all the time. You do, because I thought it was like it's above Mitch's and there's a big chunk of DCR and then there are these parcels and, and then up and around. But the Do you know where the parcels are? Have you seen the map at all? No, but I know that they drive down there and they dump the birds out there two, three times a year. It's all, it's it's all, it's 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 all Barstow's land, I think, and that's all in the APR like right now. This is at the beginning, it looks like. like yeah. Of, uh, but see, the other, the other two on the end might have bought them, Joyce, at the end of... Uh, 17. Yeah. yeah. 17 A and B. So I don't... I just want to point out that, that there's a lot of uncertainty this about where true. precisely yeah. these parcels are. Um, and it's a common problem with these river parcels. It's, you know, the, the old deeds are very unclear, and to clarify, to find out exactly where these are is going to require a lot of due diligence and legal work, and a lot of surveying work, and a lot of dollars. Took half of those and properties some might be underwater, and so that's a that's yeah. an added complication to figuring out where yeah. they are, yeah. and um, so that reduces the value of these substantially. Two um, of them are off Lawrence Plain, and then three of them are Fort Meadow. So you look the map you're looking at. They may not don't get attached to where those locations are. That's all I would say. Those are descriptions. Where the water is. Yes. You want to look at it, Sinky? Which would mean along it'd be along the snowmobile trail also. I I do have a list. I didn't color that. That's the old bridge there. Yeah. Yeah. So, a, a couple of comments on this. Um, Thank you, John. I spoke with uh, was it Mr. French. Is he the uh, yes. Silver County leader. manager? Uh, about concerns about hunting and snowmobiling, and his statement was that snowmobiling is allowed on state-recognized snowmobile trails uh, in the uh, Okante Refuge, of which there are none. So, my counterpoint was so that snowmobiling is prohibited. Correct. The trail has been there since the 70s. But it's not state recognized, so that's the issue. And, and wait, wait, wait. So that's, that's, isn't Conti yeah. federal? It is. So that doesn't, so state law. But under their rules, well, I don't it has think, to be state well then, Let me tell you what DCR allows. It doesn't have to be a designated trail. There's got to be four inches of snow on the ground mm -hmm. in order for us to let people ride. Right. Because it doesn't, Im we're just wondering, you know, concerned about impact. Right. 
So if we if there's four inches of snow on the ground, it becomes very very like yeah. You go ahead and ride. Right. No one's looking to stop anybody. I understand that, but part of the proposal here is to sell this land to the federal government to be included in the silver no. county. No, no, no. I think I think I think that probably the most likely candidate in terms of uh, this land, if it's not going to be sold to private parties, would be DCR because the Connecticut River, if they're willing to accept it, because the Connecticut River Greenway State Park is on pretty much surrounding all of it. So, so when I'm looking at the proposal, it says inclusion. Yeah, I mean, at the time we were wondering who who might want want it, um, and and so we just covered our bases, but. I, I don't. I, I think it's DCR is probably a better fit if they're willing to accept it. Of course, that's the that's the key. Right. And if you're willing to part with it. And then I did a little bit of checking with um, the local sur surveyor, and he said that to survey this property, all 40 acres, and do the legal research that would be required, would be roughly ten thousand dollars. So we're not talking a, a giant sum of money that it would be cost prohibitive prohibitive to do if we had to. So, um, unlike the other land that we're maintaining ownership of and we'd be able to put a conservation restriction on, I'm not in favor of selling this to DCR or Sylvia County. Why, why would we sell it below market value anyways? That's exactly That's right. like stupid. Well, it depends. We need to have somebody survey us and then tell us actually what the property is. If it, like you said, is it underwater? Who was the survey you talked to? Uh, well, see, some of these parcels are, are not underwater because I definitely hunt these. They're behind uh, caustics, mm -hmm. and it would know, be behind uh, chamorros. Yeah, and these 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 are huntable properties that are hunted every year and stocked by the state. The state puts money into these. I don't think we should sell any of these at all. To anybody for any amount of money. But we don't own them yet. Yeah. That's the other thing. Unless you own them and then put, you know, then open it up like we just did. Yeah. Yeah. I know that everybody uses it. That's a possibility. If we were to foreclose on the 40 acres, um, and then maybe then we can put it into a conservation restriction. I don't know. Is that well, what we could, what's the sure. Why would it be any different than the, than the other lands? That's what I'm saying, that yeah. if we maintained ownership of it and put the restriction on it, then we could maintain it open to hunting, fishing, snowmobiling, et cetera. But selling it to Silvio Conte or DCR or whoever, we have no guarantee. Could we put that into, into conservation, Paul or Janice? Um, well, you, you Ourselves as a town, it could, could we do that without going through selling it to you or whatever? So could, could we still designate it? You, you could, but there's a big issue with Riverland, and that is enforcing the law on the river. As we all know, is there are big issues of abuse along the river that the, 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 the local law enforcement has difficulty addressing, especially with river parcels that don't have any road easy road access. Mm -hmm. And so another benefit of seeing DCR on this land would be that DCR has a police boat. Um, the, the police in Hadley don't. And so it, if you're going to own it, you're going to have to deal with the problems that are going to come with owning a river parcel. We, but we, this, we, these we, parcels are gated we don't have a by the boat. town. The environmental we, police have a police The environmental boat. police, sorry. Yeah. We, yeah. we don't have a There's a gate across this road. To access any, all of these properties, you have to go through a gate. But people go around it. There's, there's no there's no access from the road to these parcels. So right. the land owns that the town owns it. They'll own this one and this one and this one with no access for public to get to, mm -hmm. without going through other land. And also, it's a lot of liability to have these remote parcels along the river, because um, there is a lot of traffic on that river that pulls mm -hmm. up wherever they can. So I'm not sure the town. Owning it is such a good idea. I mean, if, if it can be put into a conservation restriction and sold, the land sold to. You get enough state. problems with buildings, and my waterways now. Then, then the, the restrictions, the conservation restrictions can be in there allowing the hunting on those small parcels. But again, it's this one and this one. It depends what the landowners want in between. Go ahead. Uh, can I make a suggestion um, regarding these eight parcels? If the 
town decides it's going to move forward and they all become tax title and you decide um, to sell it to DCR, what's wrong with putting a caveat in the deed that comes into DCR that says to be open for hunting? Isn't that what Joseph Skinner did to the mountain in the reverse? So the parcels could come into DCR, stipulate it for hunting, which we're going to allow anyway because the neighboring parcels are already open to hunting, but to make sure that these particular parcels stay open forever and ever, amen, that deed coming into us can state that. And then we're obliged to keep it open for hunting forever and ever, amen. Well, then pay for fair market value for it. Fair market value for it is going to be about three grand because there's no road. Past I'll give you three grand for it right now. <laughs> it's not buildable. So I'll give you three well, grand and hunt it myself. That's a good thing to take into consideration. Yeah. 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 So we don't have to decide on this piece tonight, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, but that was a good recommendation. Thank you. And I'll just mention that you know Kestrel's role in this again is facilitating what the town wants for conserving the natural resource values of the town. And there's um, you know the Connecticut River State Greenway is one option, county is another option, conservation commission ownership is another option. But you know it's up to you. Our goal is to help you conserve it at, in its natural state. It's Can I ask a question? It's not buildable anyway. It's mm -hmm. right on the river right. front, and they've got Absolutely. a 200 foot buffer on the Connecticut River right, right now it's, because it's, it's a If you sell it to a private person, he can put, he can post it and keep these guys off it. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there a problem now with the DCR Greenway land that's on the riverbank? Have you guys had problems with getting kicked off of the lake with Skinner? I mean, I doubt it. On DCR land all the time. The, the, I'm, the, not the the Skinner. Skinner. I'm talking oh. about the river. You know, so you're getting kicked off, off but now you're going to give it control to the DCR. Right. We're already but kicking us off. Two weeks ago, I was on the DCR. Do you know who? Which I thought was a reason. A 20 year old college kid. <laughs> was he, a, he wasn't a ranger, right? <laughs> so why don't we put this at the public auction and sell it? Why don't we take this under advisement? Today? I was going to say, we don't even own the deadline for the 40 owners. So, so the thing of land, how can we give it to Kestro? I'm not giving it to anybody. I want to have it. So, so the, the whole thing, it, it was brought to our attention that the town was looking for an outcome for this land, some outcome. And, and so we, we, we were looking at this grant already, and we said, well, we could potentially include this as part of the grant and use it as potential match money to do more conservation. But uh, it's not a make or break for the grant. It doesn't have to be in the grant. It could be a separately decided issue. But whether you own it now or you're going to own it in three months, um, it could still be included in the grant as, as, a, as a potential. Um, and if you okay. end up owning it, then great. If you don't end up owning it, then it doesn't, go, then it's, and it doesn't end up in the, the final product. But, uh, that's why it was brought up with this, but it is a separate. It can be a separate issue entirely. It's not make or break for the grant. So, if you sell it to private owners, then they have, the, they can designate who can go on and who can't. Correct. correct. Mm -hmm. It's landlocked. So that's not anyway. a good idea. Can't be built. Yeah, but yeah. 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 Building yeah. 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 It's not likely, but it's possible in Hadley that sometimes, actually anywhere, that people are friends when land is purchased and then they become not friends. And sometimes people decide that they don't want people doing things on their property anymore. So just keep bear that in mind. Yeah. Right. So from Kestrel, can I ask, um, is it possible to foreclose on the land and put a deed restriction on the land and then sell it to, say, an abutter? Uh, requiring that the land is kept open to snowmobiling or hunting or fishing or something like that. Or hiking, please. Yeah. You, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can certainly deed restrict yeah. your, your land that you own to allow others the benefit of, of using it, whether it's just your neighbor or, or other people. Right. But um, the, the, the issue that you get with that is who, who's going to want to buy it if there's, if there's no limit to that kind of access. You're diminishing the value of that land. You're, you know, who you're going to sell it to? But I just to offered to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but you own it now. But who's going to own it in the future? Right? Right? Well, who's Whoever going to want it? Whoever will it to? Yeah. 
So how do you then protect it from protect but if access? We, if we deed it anybody. now into conservation and it remains open for hunting and fishing for forever. Right. And snowmobiling. And snowmobiling, right. yes. And horse anyone. Yep. And horses. But then, then, then it was being kept in, in, in a That's conservation a area forever right. on a deed. And and maybe a butter owns it or, or, or whoever yeah. owns it. And right. as long as it's kept open, then right. and off of the town's books. Right. <laughs> so is the issue off of the town's books? That's a big portion of it, is getting the back taxes and also avoiding the liability. Right. Right. Liability. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But if you sell it to someone, they have to pay taxes on it. Correct. Correct. If you yeah. give it to them, they don't pay any taxes. Okay. And that's, I don't think. But it's still not kept in. Right, but you're, you're saying of, gift. Of, yeah. Gift is the word. Yeah, I, I don't, we're, I don't not, we're, we're not going to gift it. Yeah. Yeah. No, we have what, 21,500? I'm looking at this. Is the total debt up on these properties right now? Right. And the assessed value is 34,800. And the, the land disappears every year when the river That's right. 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 <laughs> Which is why he's having a survey. I would like to keep it forever into conservation. Right. I think right. that would be a better thing to do than to actually sell it off yeah. um, to other people. I, mean, I, I just think if we yes. retain use of the land ourselves and just keep it as is, then that would benefit everybody. Right. And to just just got to add to what I said to so I can fill a little a minute ago, um, if a conservation restriction or ownership by DCR puts it permanently uh, in the public sphere, if you deed restrict it, some future select board could could then decide they're going to dissolve that. What? A conservation oh. restriction can't be dissolved, but a deed restriction can yeah. be dissolved. Oh, okay. if, it, if it's owned by the town, if the town if the town would puts a deed restriction sure, on it and sells it. And then the, let's say the, the future landowner has some pull in town and decides he's going to try to convince the town to, to you know, get rid of that deed restriction, then it can be done. But a conservation restriction cannot be gotten rid of. So that's a, there's it's a slight a difference. Yeah. Yeah. A deed restriction can only run for 99 years. It's sort of like the rules but and regulations. But a conservation restriction is yeah. per perpetual. So then it would be in our benefits to put conservation versus a deed restriction. Yes, so just like an agricultural preservation restriction yeah. is what I was going to say. in perpetuity, exactly like that. it could be something like that. But I think I'm also hearing the case that maybe the town doesn't want to go that route. So in either case, I think that the point is to conserve it and allow for recreational access. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do we want to uh, can we table this to a later meeting? I mean, we don't have to decide this tonight because we are not under you know, no pressure. Away, right? You don't even own it. What if the yeah. What if the guy comes forward and pays his taxes? Yeah. 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 We I think have, if you we, that, well, right now we're only looking at five is what we have. We don't have eight. Three, three we own already. Three we own already. So five are in process. We so we already own three. We own yes, yeah, 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 seventeen five are A, B, right and twenty. Now. Molly, this is what we're. I mean, this is. But you got this from Janice from yeah okay all right so, so we own those three. this already what, happened three, 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 five of twenty seventeen a and seventeen b five we do not yeah. yes someone can come oh, forward the ones that aren't on this list we own yeah okay, so that's the, that's the two but closer to um, we haven't okay. heard from them all right so we need to go through the other process with the other five partials so there there is yeah. a, a slight benefit to to even even if you don't own them yeah. saying that if you did own them you would potentially consider them as part of this project. There is a slight benefit of being able to leverage dollars or whatever uh, by including it. Now, whether you ultimately include it or not, a case-by-case -case basis is, is up to mm -hmm. the town, but there is a slight benefit in including them in that letter. Whether, it, whether you end up owning them or not, or whether you, in the end, decide you want to do something different with them. But You're if right. we don't include them in that letter, then we can't, can't in the grant, the we can't, use the grant with them. So that's the benefit of including them in the letter. Anybody want to include them in the letter? I can make a motion that we include the 40 acre it's parcel just for an in the letter. Yeah. It's a letter of intent. Right. It's, 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 it's the same thing. You still want to have a separate conversation about these from the, the But other we can still put right. it into the letter of intent, but it's not, it can be taken out. Non-binding. Non-binding. And, and I'll have information from our tax title attorneys. And maybe we can take it up in another one. 
And whether you want to ask more money for them or, or whatever, that's yeah, something we can figure yeah, out yeah, later on. Right. Yeah. Aye. No, not at this time. I'm going to say no on this one. Three to two, that we will put in sort of a letter of intent with conditions that we can withdraw at a future date. Thank you. I'll try not to let you all down. <laughs> <laughs> Seem good, so I don't think so. It's, so. it's always good. Discussions are always good. It's always good to hear the other side of what people have to say. It's something wrong with that. Can I just ask a question? Um, the gentleman that was here yes. previously from DCF? Yes. Peter. Who is that? Peter. Peter Pete Michaels. Michaels. He's our rank. He's one of our rangers. Keith Michael? Peter. 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 Peter Michael. Peter, Peter, Peter Michaels. 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 With an S on the end. Got it. Thank yes. you. By the way, isn't there a range advisory committee? Is there a range? A range advisory committee? Are, are you thinking friends of the whole group? Friends of the whole group? Yeah. They're, they're not a governmental group. They're no, no, but they're right. a citizen. There is. They, they don't meet that often, but there is an yeah, advisory committee. It's a not for profit organization. I understand that. What I was saying is that there's already advisory. maybe there's more than one vehicle. Just, 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 or, yeah, oh, okay, good. Yeah. So well, I'll, the board I'll be the still uh, open for discussion. We've only done a letter of intent, so no. there will be more discussion on this coming. Do do this. Yeah. I don't need that. <laughs> all right. Uh, I think we, thank goodness we did all our other stuff before this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, get back to it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, folks. Thank mm -hmm. you.